public comment. Open the meeting with the uh, public comment. Anybody wish to speak? Oh, Lori. Sorry. Yeah. Hand up. Yep. Two hands up online. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Yes. Um, I um, am here to talk about uh, Earth Day um, project event that we would like to hold. Uh, at a regional energy committee meeting, I learned that Greenfield is doing an event on Earth Day and on Arbor Day, and they were encouraging other communities to join in. So I've done a little bit of research and I found out that the tech school has been growing um, small trees um, at a reduced rate to sell um, through a grant that they got. And I have gotten in touch with Jason Miller and Chris Miller, um, Chris from the DPW and Jason Miller, the tree warden. Oh, great. Um, we are going to meet with them on, our, my partner is going to meet with them on Friday. Um, one possibility of a location is at the north end of North Main Street. Um, so south of the intersection with, with Greenfield Road and north of the intersection with Greenfield Road on the east side. Um, and I'm thinking of two, two things going on. One is Earth Day, um, community volunteers would do the tree planting. And then um, on Arbor Day, which is when students are back in school, um, we would do some kind of planting at um, the high school and at the elementary school. Again, um, Bill Hildreth wanted to lean on Jason Miller, the tree warden for ideas about um, where they could put in one or more trees. So I don't know if you have any thoughts about that, questions, concerns. But I don't think I have to tell you why we would want to plant trees. <laughs> no, that's great. Our, our goal is really to, um, you know, work with a tree plan that we have already and obviously with a tree warden. So. Um, we want to keep keep the um, species the same, you know, going forward. Well, um, our the tr report on our tree belt was that it was two predominantly um, maples, right. which are subject to climate change issues. So we we want to have more diversity in the tree belt if we could. I I'm not I don't know what trees are are being offered, but. If they're not maples, I think would be probably best. Okay. Um, yeah, Kurt had um, quite a variety and they're all native species, he said. So being the head of landscaping um, at the tech school, I thought I would lean on him and Jason for suggestions of the right trees at the right location. You know, I know there's considerations of soil type and the height and blocking, you know, sight lines and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any additional public comment? Does somebody else have their hand up online? I think. Nope. I don't see anybody anymore. Oh, okay. We have we have a we have a gentleman here. So uh, please come up to the mic and state your name. Thank and you very much. Welcome. Hello, folks. So my name is Jack Wilden. I'm here with a couple of my neighbors, uh, uh, the Gwanters from uh, Steam Mill Road. And we're just here to update you briefly about the situation there and to make sure that we remain within your field of attention. Sure. Right. So the main reason that we wanted to come is because we had been exploring, and you may or may not have heard about that, the possibility of a citizen's petition as a way to get uh, our issue included on the town warrant. Um, the idea was going to be to ask the town to initiate the process for accepting Steam Mill Road up through number 60 or 61, whichever side you wanna look at as a town way. But it is our belief that the select board would probably be pursuing something very similar to that were it not for the ongoing litigation. <clears throat> and so we've decided on that basis, at least for now, not to proceed. We felt it would only make things more complicated for everybody. And so we aren't going to, at least for now, pursue the citizens petition thing but we do hope that the select board will at their earliest opportunity start taking the necessary steps to deal with our situation on Steam Mill Road. Um, it's also the case that we were, as law requires, offered the opportunity to intervene in our neighbor's lawsuit regarding the status of the much longer stretch of Steam Mill Road that they are 
um, litigating about. But we declined to do that, the neighbors on the road, absent the people who are the, the plaintiffs, because it, that's just consistent with our view that our interest in affirming the status up to 60 or 61 is distinct from the assertions that are made in that lawsuit, and we don't see how it benefits us to participate in it. So we are not involving ourselves in that. Related to that, um, you are probably aware that the Commonwealth has recently decided to intervene in that lawsuit. We have no idea what that means, what they're doing, but they are going to intervene as an interested party. Um, we know why they're doing it, because they own property in the Greenway, which is a budding steam mill road, and so they are going to be a party for what that's worth. And I hope that you knew that, but if since town council isn't here, I thought I would bring that to your attention. Finally, um, we just wanted to express our appreciation to the select board for the fact that uh, Steam Mill Road was maintained during this past winter. That was really very good. We hope and trust it will continue for the foreseeable future. We're hoping some of the potholes will get fixed as things go forward. Um, we would love to have some kind of official confirmation that that is in fact gonna happen. I don't know whether that's possible, but that would certainly make us all sleep better at night. So in conclusion, we just look forward to continuing to cooperate with the select board. That is our goal. We think there's a mutually um, satisfactory resolution available and we are looking forward to the day when that happens. If Thank we you. can ever answer any questions or help in any way, please let us know. Very grateful for your comments. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Take it Thank, you, Thank you, Jack, I appreciate that. Any other public comments? Hearing none none. online. Okay, thank you. Hearing none, uh, we'll proceed with our first hearing. Thank you the for class coming. two dealer's license for K Dog dealer. Doing well. You? Oh, pretty good. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thought I was going to be late tonight. <laughs> no. Sorry, we're late. Sorry, we're, we're late. late. I got called into UMass at four thirty, and I'm like, oh, I gotta get to the. Oh mm -hmm. no. Yeah, thank you. Do you need me to read any of this or do we have to open the hearing? <laughs> yep. do you want me to, okay, so I'll make a um, motion to open the hearing for the class two used car dealer's license for the Deerfield Select Board hereby give notice in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 140, Section 59, that K Dog Auto Sales at 941 River Road, Deerfield, Mass, has filed an application with the Select Board to operate a class two used vehicle dealer business. In compliance with the Massachusetts General Laws, the Select Board will hold a public hearing at the Municipal Office's main meeting room, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, on March 23rd, 2022, at 626, uh, at 615, but here it is, 626. Um, meetings are being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room at South Deerfield. Uh, municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Remote participation, if people want to join by uh, by phone, they can at 312-626-6799. Uh, There's a toll-free number at 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. And you can also click on this uh, select board meeting at the town website, uh, on the calendar on the bottom right, click on the agenda. There'll be a, a link to get you onto Zoom. So meeting is now open. Okay. Um, no. You want to present your case, Kim? Uh, well, I had previously applied for a home-based business, which uh, didn't turn out in favorable <laughs> fashion. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Um, I have since. Uh, secured a commercial space, which was previously a used car lot in the past. Okay. Um, so being with that said, uh, that's why I proceeded to uh, pursue that location. Thank you. Sounds good. So that's at, um, that's at 941 River Road, right? And you Correct. said they were, yep. there was a car dealership there before. Yep. Used car. Repair yep. Shop. yep. Um, 
The one question I had when you wrote the application said metal sided building with office space located at uh, 941 River Road, Deerfield, Mass, yep. Yep. up to, and there was a blank spot there, used car vehicles or? or oh, is there uh, a number 15. of? 15. Okay, yep. that's what I was wondering how many spots you could have there. Oh, great. I was told he's going to pave that area out there. Oh, good. Coming up in the near future, I hope. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I'm trying to remember initially we uh, one of the concerns is you had to have a relationship with I have that that should be yeah you've got yeah, that somewhere here. in there I got a, I, a contract with Douglas James Automotive oh okay yeah yep. okay yeah he does auto body and mechanical repairs on oh, these are the five oh, okay you've got a map here yeah perfect yeah I have the, the copy of my bond in there yep. somewhere yep. also. Yep. Okay. I think I have a lot more covered this time around than the last. You do. Time. You do. <laughs> so in a great spot. So. Uh, no, it's just. Okay. Let's see what this means. Does anybody else want to comment on this during the hearing? Carolyn, anything? No, I, I think I have to see everything that we were concerned about before. I think the biggest uh, area of concern before was being in the residential area and yeah. how you were going to monitor yeah. the amount of vehicles and, and that sort of thing. And I, at this point where it's a commercial space right. uh, with up to 15 vehicles, I don't foresee yeah. an issue of having to monitor that at this point. Is it, no. um, is it, I'm just trying to think of the building. Is it, um, it's I the, know the Troop Corp is right there. It's the one between Douglas James and Troop Oh, okay. Corp. Okay, yep. perfect. Yep. Runs parallel to the road. Yep. Okay, great. I think everything else is in order, right? So, yep. And the vehicles are going to be parked away from the main parcel there uh, up on the old, I guess it's a town road. Yeah, old town road. Former yeah. town road. Yeah. It's going to be in that, up in that area there. So, there's not going to be any impediment of traffic uh, for display uh, vehicles. Perfect. Okay. Trevor, yes, this I put on the screen. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Yep. The yep. area where I'm looking at is the left side. The left side there. Yeah. Yep. There's a white door right there. With oh yeah. Door. Yep. All right. And then he'll uh, he'll get some pavement done. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. So. No other questions. I'll make a motion. Do you want to close the hearing? Yeah. No other make questions. Motion to close the hearing. I'll make that motion. Uh, second it. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wilson. So okay. I would make a motion to approve the um, the class two used uh, car dealer license for up to fifteen spots at uh, for K Dog Auto Sales at nine forty one River Road, Deerfield, Mass. Um, I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfman. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank Thank you. you. all the success. Thank great. you. How, how does this, this is the first time I've had to really- A positive result? <laughs> well, no, <laughs> the process from this point, um, is it, yep. uh, is there a, a period of time that, that it takes for the town to issue the license or? I believe we would sign the paperwork and then um, Casey might be able to answer that. Yeah. It's in the little yeah, stack of papers for me to, to sign. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chris quotes me. <laughs> the only reason I ask is that that will allow me once I have the license to register with the auctions and for sure and then there's a process that goes along with that time frames for sure yep we'll help move that along oh okay great thanks
Stamp it. I guess we're all set. Yeah, I yep. think we're good. Yeah, hang okay. on one minute. Thank you very much. Get it scanned in for you. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next hearing on our agenda is with uh, Amber Gardens. Welcome. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. How are we doing? Uh, Good. Kate on? Yes. Katie's here and Leslie's here as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, members of the, the board, Leslie Delaney Hawkins, I am not there in person, although I do know that the actual owners and operators, Shane Hyde and Dan uh, Gillen are present. Uh, so we greatly appreciate your time. And I'll just very briefly uh, provide an overview of where we are before I turn it over to them. And obviously uh, to any questions you have, uh, Phil Silverman, who is uh, the attorney for Sons Mass, is also on the call. But we just want to take a moment and say thank you for all of your patience. Uh, one of the reasons that we have had to postpone this is because we wanted to make sure that the parties had come to an agreement on the final terms of the purchase and sale of both the, uh, the property and the proposed operation. And we are there. We have executed documents. So it, it seemed just to make it uh, more streamlined and uh, cleaner for everyone that we should come to that point before we came before you. And we really appreciate uh, Casey's flexibility, Kate's flexibility, and you know, your flexibility in allowing us to get here before you. And with that, I, I believe the board is very well aware of what we're proposing uh, and what we're proposing to take over. We've had the special permit amended to list uh, this proposed operator, and we're very much excited to move forward with finalizing the terms should the board uh, approve this of this host community agreement and uh, imminently filing with the CCC. We know one of the issues that's come about with cannabis establishments is people sitting on HCAs or deals not progressing as quickly as as folks would like, and that's something that we've been very committed to is being transparent with the, with the town and providing regular updates as we previously discussed on where we are in the permitting and licensure process. And we're just, uh, my clients can say it better than I can, but we're very excited to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kate, did you, or, or Casey, was there uh, dramatic changes to the HCA or what do we? I don't think I have a copy of that, do we? No, I can speak to that, Trevor, if you'd okay. like. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so no, there were no significant changes um, from, from the earlier agreement. Essentially, it's um, obviously a change of the corporation. Um, it's made clear that this is a cultivator and manufacturer license. Um, and the only, the only, I guess, significant change, but it's not, not significant in terms of substance, but it's different, um, is the fact that they've notified you that they may voluntary, voluntarily terminate should the actual sale not go through between the two companies. So obviously they, they don't wanna be a party to a contract if they don't have the property and all of that jazz. But right. other and than Kate, that- do you, mind, do you mind if I just jump in on that Kate, point? And Kate, Kate, you've been phenomenal. And we really appreciate that. The goal of that provision is because we're not just looking to open it up right here, we're also buying the properties, we're buying it from Sun's Mass. And obviously, uh, Phil Silverman's on, who is the, the attorney for Sons Mass. If in the event that we're given a host community agreement, we have the special permit, but the deal on the purchase of the property doesn't close, neither the town nor any of the involved parties want us to be able to just sit on a host community agreement if we're not moving forward with the deal. So this actually gives the town and you a little more uh, kind of control 
over that, but also gives the seller the control to know while both parties are completely committed to this deal, we understand that if the town's going to grant us a host community agreement, we need to move forward and we need to do so in a timely manner. So that was kind of the the impetus for that language being suggested. Yeah. Thank you. So other than that, I mean, we're in we're in really good shape. So it's the same kind of document that you've seen in the past. Um, and the question is, do you feel comfortable with em Ember Gardens as a partner um, to partner with you in the town? And that's really the significant issue before you tonight. I feel very comfortable. Anybody else? I feel fine too. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Now the, the host agreement start when they actually take possession of the property? Well, it's a, the effective date is when we execute, right? But payments don't begin to be made, obviously, until they start operation, which makes right. sense because yeah. yep. they wouldn't have any product right. from right. which you could generate income. Yep. And one, Kate, and to the members of the board, one thing that we had discussed with the planning board that is attached as an exhibit to this, one of the things that we committed to was giving regular updates to the town about where we are in the licensure process. Great. So I think we just want to clarify on what terms you would like those updates. We're absolutely committed to those, but we just want to make sure because that is an exhibit to the host community agreement that we're all on the same page about when and how those should be made, whether they're quarterly or whether they're in person via writing. And obviously the town has the ability to call us before you at any time uh, to discuss, so. I'm, I'm fine with a memo, I think. Yeah, the memo is fine, just, to, just I, an update. I, where I was where, at the planning board meeting on um, Monday and they wanted to know what we were doing about updates. So I would, would said that we were gonna yeah, find, you know, discuss that. Quarterly memo is fine. I mean, I know it takes time to go through that stuff. So yeah, the, the work Well, I think monthly on the licensing. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure how fast. I, I mean, everything I, I've seen is just slow as molasses. This doesn't have to be like a huge deal. Just where are you at? Yeah. And, and part of it is because you know we were trying to be on the cutting edge of this, and yeah. we still don't have anything going on. So we just want to make sure that you are really moving forward. So just a memo every month to the planning board and to the select board, and um, just saying where you're at. Right. That'd be great. That'd be great. We're now, not. We, we did pass a bylaw in town so that it allow manufacturing in that area. You still plan on manufacturing? Yes, sir. Great. Yeah, it's perfect. Good. Good. So, um, you know, it's been a long, hard row for us. <laughs> um, and for you too, I'm sure. Yeah. For on several different fronts, you know, obviously part of it is the economics and what the town <laughs> is facing. So. Uh, it's an important economic development for this town, so. Um, guys, can I interject here for one quick second because I'm getting um, a text here too. The other thing that I think may need to be adjusted because we just, we were supplied this um, revised HCA the other day and, and Casey had actually made an excellent, excellent point. I don't think this property is hooked up to sewer. So if you look at, um, the um, page four, it's subsection G. It says the company anticipates it may um, pay sewer charges. I actually don't think they're hooked up to sewer at this facility. They are. They no, are. And, and we're not. And I think that was probably pulled over from a, a separate HCA. Yeah. So yeah. we're more than happy. Again, not, not a substantive in some nature, but we want off, so we didn't particularly understand that term. So we're happy just to talk through it and make sure we revise accordingly. Yeah. So we're just going to delete that reference in the HCA. And with that change um, being recognized, this thing is ready to go. Great. And, and Kate, I will say the, the only change that I think came about uh, the Sons Mass folks had some very minor language changes to that amendment. And the only other change, again, not, not particularly substantive, but was just around um, the, the after the five-year term, 
instead of just an automatic renewal, an automatic renewal if we cannot negotiate to come to terms in good faith? Um, and I don't think that's in the red line. Leslie. That was that was very last minute. So we ah, okay. we could talk about it. We we can come to uh, the language, but not changing the uh, the proposed uh, deal in any way. Yeah, we'll we'll talk. We can talk about that offline, um, guys. And then what we can do is give you the final document that you can look at individually. And, and ensure that it meets with the substance of what you're approving tonight. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Do, do you need a motion now or should we wait until we get that? Or a motion in lieu of any changes? So you, if you wanted to go forward with a motion tonight, you could do a motion to approve subject to changes negotiated between town council and Ember Gardens Council provided said changes do not result in substantive changes to the agreement. Right. And we would respectfully really appreciate that motion because it would allow us to move forward, which I think is what everyone, uh, yeah. everyone is looking for. And we don't want to take that. any more, more time. So I'll make that motion and- I'll second. Carolyn, hopefully it's on tape so you can get into the minutes. Yeah. Okay, can you <laughs> I can't repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Dave Wolfer. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. Look forward keep to moving. Uh, yeah, <laughs> keep, us, keep us posted. Ready already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you all very much. Thank Good you. night, guys. Good night. Thanks, Thanks Leslie. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks Phil. Thank you, Phil. All right. Casey, can you just, um, just a quick memo to Anna Lee at the planning board that, um, that we agree to a monthly update for, for this. For the monthly update? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that would include the planning board. And so stuff Anna Lee is supposed to be on this call for um, this next hearing, right? Yeah, she'll be here. Great. Yeah. Is she? she Denise. I see Denise, yeah. Um, well, maybe Annalie. I don't know. Is Annalie coming, Denise? Annalie's on the West Coast, so she is otherwise Annalie. engaged. Three hours oh, off. Okay. Yeah, okay. She's three hours. yeah, you know, and I know that Lily had sent, um, she sent an email to Casey earlier. I know that she is on a CPC meeting tonight, I think, so she would not be able to come and speak until I think she said 7.45. But um, I noticed today, I looked at the agenda that I was on the agenda. <laughs> I didn't realize. So if you guys have questions, you wanted me to re report on CCI, well, I can do that. I was just hoping you could do the CCI update, um, specifically that we haven't heard back from Joe and Natalie. As far um, as yeah, heard. yeah, no, I'd be happy then, to. I mean, um, yeah. Then we could put off the complete neighborhood partnership mm -hmm. until Lily can come. I think so, Lily said that she could at 745, but I'm not yeah, sure if yeah, anyone we, did. We could do other until 745. Okay. All right. So I, know, I, I think you. Um, or is it no, it's no, under it's appearances. Just, yeah. It's just under. It's not a yeah. hearing. Okay. It's just about a grant. It's yeah. a different yeah. program. Yep. Yeah. But it fits what we're trying to do with the campus. Okay. okay. Right. Thank you guys. Have a good Thank night. You. Thank you. Thank um, you. So. If you gave us a CCI update. Sure, whatever. sure. And just to let you know that I'm gonna be on a Zoom, I think Friday morning at 10 o'clock with Lily and I don't know, someone else pertaining to that grant. So what's happening now on CCI is that I just checked for the small streets and spaces that we're doing for the crosswalks. We should hear four to six weeks. So that would give us, that would either be April 1st or mid April. We should hear about that. Hopefully we will get that. I, I'm pretty confident. And then we were able to, we did submit the expression of interest for the um, community one stop that was done. Alice did a great job. It's great working with her. And so we will, they said, as soon as they take a look at that, they'll get back to us. And then we'll get some help on doing the full application, which will, I think we'll probably submit that mid-May, I believe. Um, so that's going well. 
Um, I'm trying to think what else. I know, I think that um, Tim Chief and Julie did meet together at the former grammar school senior center. I'm sure the chief could give you an update on that. I mean, I'm, I'm not really gonna do that, but I think um, he did that and he's gonna be looking into that. So if you guys want him to speak at some point, that might be helpful. I'm trying to think what else. I know Trevor, I'd looked into, you'd looked, you'd asked about other funding for the town center. And I realized that that was the community one stop. So that's a no go for this year. Yep. Um, so we can certainly look into that for next year. Um, and I think that's really it. I mean, unless you guys have questions. Nope. Nope. Thank you. I, yeah. I just really appreciate it, Denise. This is so exciting. We're moving yeah. forward on a lot of stuff. Definitely. And I think what Lily, when Lily, Lily can do that, that's not my thing. She can explain that. I, I think it really all works together. So, you know, we're pretty excited about that. Um, oh, you, one last thing. I'm sorry. Uh, UMass will be giving us some type of presentation either the end of April or the first week in May. I'm not sure what form that's going to be. And that's when they came over the clean energy to talk about that. So, as soon as we know about that, we'll certainly let you guys know whether it's in person or on Zoom, because I think that'll be really interesting. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Have a well, great I'm going to go and have dinner then. All right. Thanks, Thanks Denise. Denise. Okay. Thank Thanks. Bye. Okay. Uh, next thing is uh, select board reports, announcements. Um, I guess you're on top of the list there, Carolyn. Um, we, we have uh, the climate change forum on April 2nd, and it's at Frontier. It starts in the morning um, at nine o'clock. We have coffee and snack, and then at, uh, we have a catered lunch. The cutoff for the catered lunch, sign up for the catered lunch, is this Friday. So people need to sign up um, if they want to enjoy the lovely lunch with um, all the information that we're handing out. We have strategies for reducing carbon footprints, home energy efficiency and, and home solar, greening your community, climate, uh, municipal climate change strategies, promoting electric vehicles, maximizing solar in your community, student engagement to address uh, climate change, resources for sustainable farming and forestry, and then deep energy retrofits, net zero buildings and community aggregation. So there's plenty of workshops. We have 33 speakers that are experts in the field. And so we're certainly hoping that people will sign up. So you can just go to um, the select board office, uh, call in the select board office 665-1400 extension uh, 111 for Pat Kroll or admin assist at town.deerfield.ma.us to register. So if Trevor, if you don't mind putting this back on the- Oh, for sure, yeah. On we'll run that. Uh, yeah. Deerfield now. Oh, I think I've got a copy here, right? Do I? Yeah. Okay, yes. yeah, I'll yes. definitely do that. Get it back up and running. Um, so yeah, I'm excited yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been volunteered to be there, so. All right, good. Nice. Um, we do need, we do need, um, we had Diana and, um, Pat Kroll sign in people uh, last last time in seems like forever February 29th 2020 we're trying to get what our momentum change. back yeah so um, I don't know Casey if um, Jen and Pat or you and Pat or somebody we need two volunteers for that for a sign in for the sign in yeah let's see we can I'll have to check with yeah yeah that's I'll, I'll yeah. get that yeah, okay. no, that's fine. Okay. Um, but otherwise, everything else is covered. Great. Good. Exciting. Yep. Really exciting to get Should back to that. Yep. It's good. And Joe Comerford and Natalie Blay are going to be there. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. The last one was just fantastic, really. Well, we're trying to get our momentum back. Yeah. And that was more of a big picture. This is really focused on what we're going to do in Deerfield, yeah. yard by yard. Um, it's on. So there's going to be, you know, talking about soil health, making yep. dragonfly habitat. Jonathan is going to do a little YouTube kind of thing on what nice. you do so we can just reference it on the um, 
you know, out in the YouTube business. That's great. So we're going to get this dragonflies, oh, nice. Deerfield dragonflies nice. out there. But they down. eat many more um, mosquitoes and they eat mosquito larvae right. um, versus the bats. And everybody loves dragonflies. So if we have enough dragonflies, then we will not have mosquitoes. Sounds good. Yep. Great deal. Cool. Um, so the, the bats that were housing in the old grammar school aren't yeah. perfected. Well, have to move out. <laughs> they've had some, they've had health issues lately. So <laughs> what we're trying to do is promote the dragonflies. Since okay. They take up seem... less room over there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, let's see, from my announcements, we have uh, April 9th, the Franklin County Selectmen's Association, along with, well, we've been working with a different planning, you know, regional planning uh, agencies for COG and uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Agencies to do um, a Western Mass um, Summit. So we have a lot of speakers. Uh, Chief Pachurk is going to be speaking on the police reform bill, and we have a lot of other uh, good speakers and, and um, people from all over the four counties of Western Mass coming together talking about ARPA funding and infrastructure. And so it should be a good morning. It's going to be in from 8 to 12 in um, East Hampton, the East Hampton High School, and all select board members, finance committee, anybody wants to go, uh, can sign up. There'll be a you know box lunch after, but really good presentation. So I'm really excited about you know I've been working with a, a core group of people getting that together, and so that's we had our final planning meeting today, and pretty excited about that. So um, had another meeting with the nonprofits in town this week, which was really great, a good working group, and. I think we'll continue that to try and learn about the projects they're working on, talk about projects we're working on and, you know, how we can partner together. And I think it was a good, good first step and um, really looking forward to more of those. And that's all I've got. Okay. Uh, you know, there's everybody has been around town at all. We know that there's a lot of things going on in town. It's a very busy spring for us. Uh, we're trying to get it to everything that we can get to, but it's been a little taxing at times, and uh, but uh, our priority is the residents of the town of Deerfield. You know, sometimes it may not seem that way, but it's we're doing the best we can with what we got. You know, been discussing it with the uh, finance committee and stuff uh, about some of the staffing issues that we have within the town hall, uh, and. We're actually deficient in a number of areas. So mm -hmm. um, we hope that uh, people are paying attention. And once we get to town meeting, it won't be a big surprise to them. So. Yep. Okay. That's what I have. Yeah. Board of Health first? Or? Oh, it's up to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Anything on Board of Health? Well, just a, a COVID update. Um, just in the past week, there was a 56% increase in the Boston wastewater monitoring of virus viral load. So potentially there is another wave coming, but the good news is the hospitalization rates are, are very um, steady. And this new Delta Cron is a B, BA2, is, is a combination of Delta and Omicron that has been Coming over here from France and Denmark, Netherlands, they've they've had a pretty were hit pretty high, hard with that, but it appears to be even though the wastewater numbers are going up, um, and that and it looks like at least fifty percent of the cases are Delta Cron already in here, and because they're sequencing them and trying to, you know, get an idea of what's happening over here. The high vaccination rate that we have, as well as the number of people that um, got infected with Omicron, seems to give us some herd immunity. So even though this sounds so depressing, it's just um, that this could be another wave. Uh, nobody, is, nobody is willing to predict. No, no, it's, you just can't predict anymore. So what we're saying is that hopefully, um, Get your vaccine if you haven't. Get your boosters if you haven't. Um, if you're eligible, get them. And um, and if you've had Omicron uh, at some point in this last surge, then hopefully we have a high high enough herd mentality that I mean herd immunity that we will not have any issues. So I have a, I have a question. Have you heard um, 
what seems to be circulating in China, they're going through their worst uh, since this pandemic, their worst, and they had a you know zero COVID it's policy. It's not clear. I just it's wonder. Not clear. I know it's probably not clear coming out of China, but um, but I know that they're they're off the charts on on cases right now, and I didn't know if it was a new variant or if it was you know one of I the haven't, others. Uh, we sequence uh, or in Europe is their sequencing. We're sequencing here, yeah. so it's pretty open. Right. I haven't read that there's any conclude. You know, this right. is meeting in meetings you know, state DPH meetings, and as well as um, anything that I've read, that there, there hasn't been a sequencing determination of what, of what is. Uh, is really happening. Because it seems it's like a variant, and but it's is strong. it an Omicron variant, or is it the Delta Cron variant, or it's is it a new. new variant? I'm not really the sure. The rumor was that it was something new and much stronger than either of the two that we've had before, and that freaks me out. But Well, I heard that too, but but, there's, but we, yeah, nobody you knows. You can't know for no, sure because it's not know. Western uh, yeah, civilization. Yeah, we sequence everything. So, and and Europe has a better, you know, better able to sequence than we do because they're, you know, everybody's smaller. Yeah. But we, you know, so far confirmed this is at least thirty-five percent. But on our call on Tuesday, the DPH call said it was closer to fifty percent. They're sure of Delta Cron already, and and the viral load in the Boston wastewater treatment shows that it, it is here, it is circulating, but because so many people had the Omicron and so many, and our vaccination rate is one of the highest yeah. in the country that we, we have this herd immunity. This buffering. Yeah. Buffering it. And so people aren't actually sick. So it's good. I don't know. We just have to. I know you just have to wait. We thought we were out of this last year, and then this winter was the worst we've I, ever had. The problem is, and, and the, Katie Brown, my hero, our state epi and state vet, yep. she's she says it's just they can't even predict anymore. Right. It's just there's no prediction. So who knows from now in two weeks? Right. You know, I've had questions already. What are we doing for town meeting? And it's like, well, right now, being what in the say? auditorium with the ventilation system and choosing to wear masks if people choose to wear masks sure we are all safe yep but and you're vaccinated i mean if you don't have vaccination you know yeah. who knows but if you are vaccinated up to date vaccination fully vaccinated is your two doses or one dose of j and j but if you fully um, up to date vaccination that is your booster right and it seems to be protecting people. Yeah. And so it, town meetings should be safe. But yep. that's, you know, fully a month from now. We'll just look and at so it. So who as we knows? Promise. You right. know, if we have to, if, if the data is here that we need to postpone to a later date um, to go outside, then we will. But, you know, I hate to even bring that up because who There's knows no what's going to happen? Sure. Yeah. It could be nothing. Right. Um, right now we're, you know, we're in good shape right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. we've had, um, today is the 23rd. We've had 16 cases in yeah. the whole month of March. Right. So much you know, better than we were a couple months oh, ago. A month ago. <laughs> so, I mean, we're doing okay. Yeah. It's still yeah. only every other day or yeah. every couple days or whatever. Right. So it's not a huge deal. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious if you had heard anything on that. Well, not not conclusive right nobody nobody's willing nobody to come will. out and say anything yeah okay. um, at least that i'm aware of anything else i'm good to go right. okay okay uh next thing on our agenda will be uh discussion of decision items uh, i'm going to kind of skip down a little bit and invite uh chief smith to come forward Hey, Zach. Hey. He's got his briefcase. Oh, I see. How you know I'm so important? Yes. Yeah. Right. Thank you for having me. It's an really attache. Yes. Right. Right. We had the better half last night, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you uh, for having me. I'm here tonight to. Um, ask that we make some appointments to South County EMS. So I'm sure everybody here is aware, but for the people at home, South County EMS were the paramedic level service for the ambulance for Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley. We were actually formed 
uh, way back in 2014. Um, and we are the 24 seven paramedic service uh, serving those three towns. And we are a town of Deerfield department, but we have a board of oversight. So there are people from all three towns that are appointed who weigh in on the decisions, kind of the, the strategic vision of the, of the department and, and moving forward. So back in 2014, we've always kind of run with a skeleton crew and that goal of 24 seven paramedic coverage. So you dial 911, we have an ambulance available. We actually can't cover that with our full-time employees uh, to date. We never have been. So we've always relied on experienced paramedics from neighboring communities, Northampton Fire, Amherst Fire, things like that. And there was this global pandemic. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, uh, yes. but it really hit healthcare very sure, hard. Just into that in the case. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the, the ability for these additional paramedics that have full-time jobs elsewhere to come and work shifts just so we can have an ambulance on the road has has come to an end. So we've seen over the years, we don't do a lot of hiring, we're very well respected. Um, and just over the years, the attrition and, and for somebody who spends 40 hours or 48 hours working in another community on the ambulance, they don't wanna come and, and you know work that 56th hour or anything someplace else. So looking forward to try to get our minimum staffing uh, that one ambulance 24 seven, we're looking uh, with the Board of Oversight's input to actually add two more full-time staff um, to cover what the per diems had been covering and, and can no longer cover. And so that will allow us to organically cover our calls, cover our own sick time, our own vacation time. And as a result, we won't have to be relying nearly as heavily on overtime. Um, we also, it's difficult to quantify, but employee burnout, injuries, uh, either emotional or physical, all those things we're looking to decrease by bringing on those additional full-time staff. Um, we also have had just over the years, like I said, we don't do a lot of hiring. So we've had a couple per diems leave to move out of the state, uh, to move on with their career. So it's, it's time to do what we can to replenish those and, and bring in some new blood there. And we made this posting and in the middle of the posting, we had a very experienced paramedic decide that it was time that they go back to school and they go to a, a physician assistant school. Um, so we're not only looking to add two full timers, so we have minimum staffing, but then we had this third position that we needed to fill as well. Um, these, we, we made the posting um, and we've got almost 30 applicants. So this is basically, um, the first three per diems out of that group, real, real cream of the crop, local people, um, experienced people to backfill those lost per diems, and then the, the three full-time positions. So if you'd like, I can run through real quick um, who, who these people are. Yes. Yeah. So it's good for the public. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I, so these are the people I, like I said, we had a, a huge response. Um, we're lucky at South County that we're able to make sure that we're picking really the best people that are going to fit with our service, with the community that, that have experience with a, a diverse population. Um, and and I, I'm just, I'm tickled that these people even want to work for us. Um, I, I want to preface this also by saying that we have to be kind of selective because we work on a skeleton crew at two in the morning. You know, it's, we might be the only two emergency responders on a scene you know, way out in West Waitley or something like that. So, so we, we don't pick people lightly. Um, Erin Kerr-David is the uh, first person on the list. Uh, she's experienced paramedic with four years of both urban and rural experience. Uh, usually three to four years um, is where we wanna see experience when we're gonna throw somebody out to the wolves at South County. And she went to paramedic school at the Greenfield Community College program. So she's familiar with the area, um, a great, uh, a great, program in and of itself. Um, and she's been looking for a place to really establish herself in her career. Um, so she's, she's going to be a great fit. Tyler Struthers, he's an experienced paramedic. He's actually full time at East Hampton Fire. Uh, and his passion is with medicine specifically. So as he's looking forward to his career, he's thinking about more advanced degrees or things like that. But to be able to come to South County where our mission is the medicine that we're not also trying to do fire response and things like that, that he can focus on that. This is gonna be an excellent fit for him. And then Morgan Farrick, she's a, a local EMT basic. So she grew up in Deerfield. Uh, she's currently 
uh, in the um, at UMass uh, attending towards a public health degree and she's working full time in the Springfield area for an ambulance. So she's gonna be an EMT basic with clear indications that she wants to move on and, and she knows the community. Um, she recognizes a lot of the names. So those three per diems are, are gonna be the first of, I imagine some more per diems coming down the pipe um, as we can vet and recruit some more people. And then for the full-time request, so two of these, um, Eric Drumkel and Zach Battistoni, um, well, actually all three, but these two here are existing per diem paramedics with South County EMS. They have been doing a lot of the heavy lifting, filling in the gaps with the per diems that we've lost because of COVID and, and healthcare burnout. So Eric Drumgoul uh, grew up in town. He's lived in town for 22 years. Uh, received his paramedic certification and has been working with South County EMS, Deerfield EMS before that, uh, with an outstanding track record the whole time. And Zach Battistoni, who's actually in the room with me right now, uh, recently moved to town. He's setting down roots. He bought a house over on Grave Street. Um, and he's been with South County EMS and then Deerfield EMS before that since 2015. He attended the Greenfield Community College paramedic program as well. Uh, and he's highly involved with South County EMS already in kind of the interdisciplinary regional response team duty. So he's, he's already spread his wings at South County uh, and really wants to set some roots there. So both of those people existing per diems and the, the recommendation here for all the paramedics in them is uh, the uh, grade four step two, which is the standard per diem rate um, for our paramedics who have that two to five years of experience. And then the third hire, so I mentioned that we had a very experienced paramedic decide to leave uh, to go to higher education, um, further education, excuse me. And so that really leaves a gulf in our staffing right now. So we needed to find somebody to replace that highly experienced individual. And that person is Lori McComb. So she grew up in town, um, made a name as Lankowski. Uh, she's been an Amherst firefighter uh, paramedic for uh, 12 years now, and she's been with Deerfield EMS and South County EMS um, ever since. Uh, she started as an EMT basic here with me almost 20 years ago. Uh, so she's been working as a per diem this whole time, and she would love to come and call Deerfield her home, both where she resides and also where she's working full time. So her compensation I'm being asked uh, I'm asking for is a grade four step seven. That's commensurate with the other paramedics that are similarly uh, trained and experienced. So that's 12 years as a paramedic and she'd be stepping into the role of somebody who had a similar grade and step. Uh, any questions on those people? Uh, no. Obviously, you've been doing your due diligence and getting qualified people in. Um, just for a slight education of the public. Yes. Describe how a paramedic gets their education and the continuing ed that they have to do to maintain it. Sure. Uh, a paramedic is, uh, we often refer to what we do in an ambulance is an emergency room going 50 miles an hour down the road. Um, and so every, all the interventions, all the treatments that you would receive in the emergency room, a paramedic is authorized and trained to provide in the back of the ambulance. And that's actually uh, on something that we call standing orders. So normally in a hospital, um, you, you, get, you go to registration, you get triage, you go to the room, a nurse takes your vital signs, get a brief history, and then a doctor comes, speaks to you, and the doctor writes some orders um, based on their knowledge, and then the nurse carries those out. On the ambulance, the paramedic does all of that. So we have standing orders. We don't necessarily consult a doctor at all. We can recognize, we can diagnose, and then we treat. And that's everything from cardiac arrest to heart attacks, to strokes, to drug overdoses, respiratory arrest, things like that. And there's a, we have a fantastic cardiac catheterization lab in Springfield. So if you're having a, a very bad heart attack, you need to actually go to surgery right away. And as paramedics at South County, we're trained to diagnose that in the field and drive you, even bypassing the emergency room at Bay State, straight to the cath lab operating room in Bay State. So 
of our training begins as at the EMT level. It's a 120 hour course. And that's at the EMT basic level. That's how you get your foot in the career. And then to become a paramedic, that's typically a two to three year process. So we're talking about thousands of hours. First in the classroom, you learn patient assessment, cardiology, pharmacology, uh, pharmacokinetics, biology, all those things. And then once you graduate from the classroom portion, you do clinical rotations through facilities. So emergency departments, psychiatric departments, OBGYN floors, we have to deliver babies, um, pediatric emergency rooms. And then once you get through that, then you graduate to ride time and you ride third with an experienced service like South County EMS, like Northampton Fire, and you demonstrate your skills with the direct supervision of a practicing paramedic. Um, and then only then after you've completed all that, you got your minimum skills, you're assessed, um, you then have to sit for a national and state test, which is both written and also uh, practical. So you go into a room and you have to perform the skills uh, for an examiner in the room with decades of experience. And then they give you your card and then you get to start someplace and maybe in four or five years, you'll get to work at South County EMS. So that's, uh, it's, it's no small feat. Um, I, we're really proud of the paramedics that we have working for us. They, I, I, I don't think I'm alone when I say that they're really highly respected in the, in the region and we're lucky to have them and that they would wanna work for us. And continuing it. Oh maintain. yes, continuing it. So every two years we have to recertify, which means that we have to, Zach, how many hours a year is it? 80 hours a year. So of continuing education credit. So that's uh, both dictated by the national standards about you need two hours of this, you need eight hours of respiratory, you need four hours of cardiology and things like that. Um, and then we have CPR at a healthcare professional level. We have advanced cardiac life support certifications. That's where we, we learn cardiac drugs and defibrillation and things like that. And, and that process renews every two years. So not only do we go through about that three-year process to become paramedics, but we're constantly in school for the duration of our career. And then we're retested on our knowledge and all the new knowledge that we're expected to learn every two years from, from that point forward. Oof. Thank you. David was a EMT instructor many moons ago. For 20 years. 20 was. years. Yeah, 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, we owe a lot of our legacy to him. That's why he's asking these. Well, I just want people to realize that you know, back in the old days, we had a couple of sayings. It was, you call, we haul, that's all. <laughs> or there's a spare tire syndrome. That's when we had the caddies. Put somebody in the back and both text rode in front and <laughs> kept the ambulance <laughs> to the hospital. Uh, I can remember going into the Franklin and have to ring the doorbell to have somebody answer it to get the patient inside. So we've come a long ways, baby. Yeah. So, I and the modern, the modern medicine, the modern sciences, we perform all of our skills at the patient side, wherever they are sitting or they are lying. So we don't even throw in the back of the truck. We used to call it a diesel bolus, a bolus being a medication. Just quick, give them a diesel bolus, give them to the hospital as fast as possible. We're, we're on scene for 20, 30, 40 minutes sometimes performing the skills and stabilizing a patient like they would be in the emergency department. And only then once it's safe and they're stabilized, do we move them to the ambulance and drive them someplace? So. Sometimes you do your due diligence a little too good, and some people have to stay in the hospital for three days. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well that's true, too. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll you make have... a motion to approve um, the Zach's request for personnel. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Thank you, Zach. Very proud of your uh, service. Well, I, we should all be proud. Um, and thank you for giving us basically the opportunity to be so successful. So it's it's with the support of the select board and the, and the people of Deerfield that we're keeping such a good track record. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. We're Thanks, happy to have you full time. We should do you. like ceremonies with balloons and stuff. I Embarrass all these people. Nice yeah, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Thank you for. I'm glad you moved into town as well. Yes, yeah, that too. We need your tax money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not really that. Pay for the ambulance service that's gone up. Yeah, right. Eleven point exactly. two nine percent. Right. Not to mention any numbers, but. <laughs>
Okay, let's see. Okay. Note the authorization of the, oh. for a school roof on Oxford property. Oh. Yes, so I've got the paperwork here. Um, so this is the, we've got a lot of places for us to sign, but this is the um, authorizations for $511,951. This is the bond anticipation note, which is called a ban for the school roof and the uh, Oxford property that we still own hopefully for a very short time, <laughs> uh, but just we didn't have it quite sold in time uh, for, the, for the amount to come up. We've got a, a, an excellent um, rate of 1.04867.15%. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's for the roof. Yep. And um, so this is a, uh, and that, that is a, I think that's a year note, right? Year for that one, six yeah, months yeah. for the uh, April to well, April. no, it is both. Let's see, band aid, yeah, April, mm -hmm. yep. And then the other Keep one going. is a there's two copies here. Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay, great. Let's see, that one, and I this mean, one is the, that one is the band for it's all attached. Let me is it, so, is there there's no penalty for early payment, right? No, nope, okay. Um, and the yeah, this is the six month. Oh, it's just too bad we had to do that. For the Oxford property. Yeah. Whatever. So the seal there and all. So that's still moving forward, right? Oh yeah. Yep. Moving right along. So do you need a motion for both? Uh, would you do both of these or do you want one at a time? You can do a motion for both. Okay. Make, presented together. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the and sign <laughs> the bond anticipation notes for the school roof. And I'll second that. Yeah. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay. And yep, and for the Oxford property. Yep. Well, Trevor's doing the copious amounts of signatures to start with. We'll move on to the uh, Tavern Sports Bar decision for review and signature. Okay. Um, this is a uh, official written notice to the tavern uh, after our hearing on our last meeting and our decision for the uh, suspension for seven days with a stay of all seven days, uh, basically uh, pending any uh, further infractions. <coughs> um. I just wanted to make sure I, I might have separated it. I just want to make sure we had a two year. It did say it did yeah. state it was two years. I don't have a second page. I just want to make sure that the probation period is to um, two years. It's not supposed to happen like that. Sorry. I'm trying to find it. I wonder if I messed that scan up. Sorry. Let me just check. I have this. No, that's fine. I have the Casey. packet open on the website. I just want to make sure that the, the probation was two years for sure. Oh, yeah. The second page isn't there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got stuck I thought, in the scanner. It, it may have it probably actually. Got stuck it in the may scanner. have. Yeah, but I think it was. Yes. Uh, I know that was our intent was the two years. It was in, that was the intent. And I can't seem to get the. It's maybe back. Oh, there we go. I will look, look online. Yeah. So we'll go look right up how it goes. I think it's right there. After. It's back there. Oh, I know what happened. It was a mistake when we were, when I was moving something around. That's what it was. If I recall, it says that, but let me find it before you say anything. Because I did, yeah, I went through and I read page. it because I had to revise it. There should be like a signature page, right? There is a signature yeah. page. Okay. Is it, oh wait. Oh, there you go. Yeah. The one there? Let me see. Yeah. 
There we go. Yep, yep. yep. two more pages. pages. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. So it's therefore ordered that your alcohol license be suspended for a term of seven days if there are any further violations yep. within the two year period. Got it right. There. Okay. Okay. Good. Yep. 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 That's good. Sorry about the. Okay. No, it's fine, Casey. I just wanted to verify. Yeah. yeah. So I make a motion to approve it. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Hmm. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Joe McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfen. Motion carried 300. Just for a point of interest, you know, when the board makes a decision, we try not to be punitive. We're more interested in correcting behavior. And that's what we did, what we did do. So. Yeah, uh, just a, I, some people have made a few comments here and there, and it's just let them know that we're trying to do it in the best interest of the town. Yep. And our local businesses try to support them in ways that we can, but yet correct. make sure they're correcting behavior. Yep. Okay, next thing on our agenda is the uh, job descriptions. Maybe so you please. actually only have three and the class council. So if you want, we can go through this. This personnel board has approved all three of these job descriptions and it's the public health nurse, the separation of the town clerk treasure collector into a treasure collector job description and a town clerk description. Let's start with the nurse. Um, so the grade level is not specified. And one of the reasons is this is a very part-time position mm -hmm. for positions. And we are working collaborative, collaboratively with three other towns need to maintain the same staffing pay rate level. Yeah. So the bylaw does allow us to have a part-time person outside of the comp plan. So basically, this job description outlines essential functions for a public health nurse and the includes the knowledge, skills, and ability, education and experience, and the other types of criteria that you would measure a position in terms of um, FLSA terms. So the key piece of this that was a discussion point was confidentiality, education and experience, and the essential functions themselves, which you see on page one. It's a, it's a registered nursing position working for the town of Deerfield Board of Health, and it's under the general supervision of the health agent. And really it's intended, I think if I'm getting this right, Carolyn, the nurse's position is intended to be a twofold thing like we see now with our work with the community health program or the Cooperative Health Public Health Nurse Program <laughs> up at the COG. And the intents to have regular interaction with seniors and provide vaccines, as well as um, public health monitoring, correct? Right. What I foresee is that we're taking our dollars that we spend for eight hours currently with the public health cooperative, and we're going to turn that into 12 hours at the senior center with, you know, a nurse. And we're hoping um, Sunderland is gonna, you know, at least take a few hours of that time. Um, but the monitoring and the surveillance and the home visits and stuff like that is gonna be covered under our grant. And that's Mary Ellen Sloan, who is already on staff. And, and that's the grant for Greenfield. Right. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, I forgot to announce that um, anyone that is unable to come to our PCR testing, which is occurring Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 10 to 1, 
um, can request Mary Ellen to come do a home visit um, because uh, she is um, getting the training to do the proctored test. Mm -hmm. So they, they are a step above, you know, your at home antigen test, which um, people may or may not have access to. So, um, but the thing is, one of the things I forgot to ask you, Casey, is um, she needs a badge of some sort to so ah, show that she's a legitimate, that. <laughs> you know, employee of the town of Deerfield. So, in fact, I know somebody to send her to. Okay. So I will do, if you give me your contact information, Jennifer I will. and I can, or Pat, one of the yeah. three of us can get her to the right person. But I just, um, you know, no one's really worried about it right now, as Trevor just said, but in case, well, what we're trying to do is gear up in case there is another surge of any type. We have the PCR test ha happening. We have the ability to go to people's homes if you're a shut in or, you know, a senior citizen that, you know, can't drive or whatever. Um, whatever, Mary Ellen is willing to do that. She's monitoring our Maven. She's gonna be able to work with us on um, the idea of the nurse, public health nurse being at the senior center and uh, you know, being able to screen people and do blood pressure clinics and nutrition advice, that kind of thing. But then Mary Ellen is also going to be, um, we had an amendment to our, um, the original grant so that she'll be able to connect people with services and be an advocate. You know, if you say your doctor, your primary doctor isn't talking to your specialist doctor and there's some medication issue, or you have, you're at rehab because you broke your hip and you're trying to get home and you need someone to come visit you and stuff. So Mary Ellen is gonna handle all the resources and advocacy that seems to be a huge issue for seniors now and um, the way the healthcare is and all, a lot of all of the things that were local are being transferred down to Springfield and it's hard to have communication and stuff like that. So um, Mary Ellen, this is, she lives in town. She's the nicest person and she's very experienced in the Bay State system um, because that's what she does herself. So. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. And these have already been approved by the personnel. Yes, they have already been approved by personnel. Okay. Sorry. Sign that. So the question on ter in terms of the public health nurses, would is the board prepared? It's we would need to know definitely um, before the classification before we get towards town meeting. This is actually plugged into the budget right now. Um, before we hire somebody, we definitely need to know if the board's willing to approve this, but mm -hmm. we, we, we did go over particularly those things I mentioned earlier with personnel board because they wanted to make sure that we captured confidentiality and training knowledge education. Right. So if the board is prepared to approved this, would they all felt also authorize me to make clerical changes to correct a couple grammar mistakes I found in it? Um, if not, let me know and I can make those and we can take it back to you guys. For the health, I mean, for the nurse. For the public health nurse, yeah, there's a. The bullet thing. Yeah, catch that? the bullet I thing. I just got that, yeah. <laughs> I didn't catch that the first no. time. Yeah. So I will say that the Board of Health agent drafted it and I made some tweaks to it before we presented to personal board last week. So you want us to vote on that? Yes, please. If you're willing to vote on it, that would be great. Okay. Um, well, I'll make a motion to um, uh, approve this description. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. The next one, I think it's in your packet, is the treasure collector. That's correct. And this is, this reflects the request to formally separate the three-part position into two separate positions. And we took our time with this, developing the job description, conferring, using other job descriptions, 
and taking into account not only recommendations from the auditor, but also discussions with staff to determine that path. I had mentioned it before, but really this job description outlines the essential functions, complexity, confidentiality, nature and purpose of contacts, the supervision, both received and exercised, and the accountability and judgment elements of a treasurer collector's position. And so a treasurer collector has a two-part function. The treasurer handles the treasury functions of managing town funds um, from the perspective of trust fund management, actually making sure that the funds are being transferred when you're doing bills and such. Whereas the collector functions are taking the money in and then handing them over to the treasurer for money for financial management. So these two things in many towns, they combine the two because they are closely related. So you'll see that the essential functions include both those elements. So performs duties related to collections of taxes, but also monitors cash, cash levels in treasury and arranges. This outlines borrowing, which is a, a function of the treasurer. And it also outlines the tax title. It's responsible for filing the quarterly tax reporting forms. The position's responsible for routine but complex work in financial management that's required for both these positions. But by combining them, you combine the elements that go together. It's also a position that is complex, requires confidentiality because the treasurer is also involved with benefits management. And this, this position supervises two people um, to handle both the collections, financial pieces, as well as the treasurer pieces. So we've captured that, we think, in this job description. Um, and really, you're looking at this job as what Mary Accardi called the cabinet level position because the responsibility related to money management is heavily based on experience, knowledge, coordination with our financial management group that towns are able to utilize and help us with our trust funds. Um, there's a high level of accountability and judgment and the nature and purpose of contacts is pretty substantial in terms of where that treasure collector represents the town. Um, this would be a grade G level job, which is what you'll see in the grade level on the first page. And that placement was also a conference between various people understanding the complexity of the job. So this has been approved by the personnel board. And in order for us to do the split, to go forward, which we'll talk about in the warrant, in order for us to go forward, because the legislative action exists to have all three positions, we have to leave that in the comp plan, but we also have to create these positions separately if we wanna be able to hire for them, if and when the legislature votes on our request, if it goes through town meeting. So this would allow us to do that because we have to have the job description in place and be ready to place that person in a comp plan. It is exempt, which means that it's, like I said, at that same level of the, that we would expect to see something with that level of experience and responsibility. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve the job description for the treasurer collector at grade level G exempt. And I'll second that. Uh, the only note I've got on it is, you know, when it says for experience, uh, the municipal finance is almost a necessity, not a preference. Well, I just remember Brenda, when we hired Brenda, didn't, she right. didn't have any municipal experience. So and that was actually why we got her. And, and that, the situation hasn't really changed in the sense that if Brenda decides, if she gets stolen away. Oh, she's so good. I know. Yeah. We don't have anybody. I mean, you have to be able to, um, we, we need to we'll ha have to hire somebody and then they get certified. Yeah. So I, I, I look at the town accountant being a little different than the. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess. So, treasurer collector, but that's well, just. Well, she must own. have the. So it's a good question. And let GS me explain Gasby. the reasoning behind it. So these two fields, 
um, treasure collections, treasure collections, and I should say three town accountants. Mm -hmm. They're very hard to hire for right now because There's there nobody. really aren't a lot of people in the field. Yeah. In fact, the COG and the state, DLS, recognized this several years ago. And through a lot of hard work, they've created a certification program up at GCC to start recruiting and training people. Okay. However, in this case, and this is one of the things that's specialized for treasure collectors, is having the bachelor we would hope that somebody would have a bachelor's yeah. degree but if not the combination of experience and background in municipal would be great but if you have a, a related background in finance it's a trainable skill set right. right. um definitely we would experience in municipal finance is preferred but if we limited to that if we said required it might limit us in terms of recruiting so that was what we were trying Our to be pool is about. down to almost yes. nothing at the moment yeah i know but it's, the special yeah. requirements here are key so this position right. has to be fee. bonded yeah. yeah and that's a much higher level of accountability right. that you would expect we mm -hmm. would also want this person if they weren't certified as a massachusetts treasure collector that they be able to over the period of time it takes for that training right. which is generally a three-year program Okay. So we've identified a way, a path forward if okay. we weren't able to obtain a candidate that was a treasure collector. Okay. okay. Almost, almost all of these certifal, certified positions in um, town now, you have to have the ability to hire somebody that's not completely right. certified. That's just amazing. Because there's just yeah. nobody in the pipeline. And, was, and it's, and it's got only going to get worse with the baby boomers retiring. Well, no, that. that's what that's happening. It's already yeah. getting They've worse. decided to retire yeah. in mass. Especially and, you know, with COVID. I think with what happened is people just got tired with the pandemic. And mm -hmm. if you were eligible before and you were thinking of, you were a little leery about mm -hmm. retiring because of the pandemic, but now everyone's so tired, they just have left. There's not a lot of people coming and, up through. And there is businesses. nobody behind them. So we have the opportunity. certified. Right. right. Completely and we certified. have the opportunity to have somebody go through the program mm -hmm. at GCC. But, you know, and hopefully those folks are very interested in moving into the field. Mm -hmm. um, but if we aren't able to find that, hopefully we can find a, a combination of experience and, and background. Yep. So that was the intent was to give ourselves some leeway, but also to recognize that it is a specific type of position. Okay. I, mean, I mean, obviously, if someone is certified, we would prefer someone to be certified. Correct. Sure. But no, come out correct. I, I, right. yep. Everything is so grim. I just would yep. like to say preferred. Yep. Okay. That was the reason okay. we did it. That way. I just wanted to bring it up. Yep. Just, uh, so, um, well, it did give any me an further discussion. Say no. I, All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfman. Which one is town clerk? I'd also make a motion to approve the town clerk job description as a grade F exempt. Yes. Um, I, I would second that. Okay. Any further discussion? I mean, no, I think, I, you know, I, again, I think I want to compliment you and the team for putting together these great job descriptions. They look excellent. And, yeah. um, Read them too good, and, it and, then, captures and there's everything a lot of need. there's a lot of thought put into there it. Is, there we is. There is. It's a lot now, of work. I will say, a job description is a mutable document. It changes, but sure. we tried to capture what we could. Yeah. And so, for a town clerk, it's very regulated and very right. strict in terms yeah. of statute. Mm -hmm. um, there is also a training program. Yep. Um, and so we do mention that in yep. in the um, education and experience section. Because there is a there is a couple pr training programs. There's a Massachusetts Clerks training program, and there's a NEMC training program. And I've had experience with um, a person going through the NEMC program. And so the reason I put that in there was to give us again a little bit of latitude and perhaps a different um, access point. The NEMC group is a New England Clerks group, so. We were just trying to capture what we could capture. If there's things that we need to add or change, we will certainly yeah. bring that to you. Sounds good. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next thing is disposable. Oh, we're we're just gonna vote. I don't think you voted. Yeah, we just oh, we, we seconded vote? it and stuff, but we didn't okay. vote yet. All those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Dave Wolf. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Chair. So the next thing is uh, disposable surplus property. Oregon. Whose organs are we disposing of? 
So if you recall, Paul Oshesky, and I didn't invite him to the meeting because I didn't think about it, but I will tell him I didn't and let him slap me upside the head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Figuratively, of course, he will laugh at me. Um, so this is a, an agreement to transfer the organ from the South Deerfield Congregational Church under the control of the select board to Merrimack College. They're interested in obtaining the organ and installing it in one of their chapels. Yep. And the organ itself, you had taken a vote to dispose of it as surplus with a resale value that was less than fair market value mm -hmm. because of the conditions and the ability to remove it. It would be a very expensive organ to remove which could land on the town. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I created an agreement based on another transfer agreement that we had in, in play years ago. Um, Merrimack College is a charitable 501c3 organization, which is a nonprofit. And this really outlines the, the need that you see to preserve the organ and their ability and, and need to, to want to preserve the organ Great. for both their use to install, but also the public's use mm -hmm. as part of their charitable arm. That's great. No, I'm, I'm so happy this finally worked out. We, I know um, Paul was working on this just before COVID and then yes. everything fell apart. They weren't mm -hmm. sure they were going to do this. And then um, he's been sticking with it and, um, and, and found a home for this. And it's great that it's just not going to be turned into scrap and um, it can be oh, played no, for years to come. You I know? was just going to say that yeah. it's still cherished. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And it'll be, it'll be in that building, I'm sure, for many years. So and he did work with a company to, to yeah. share the information so that they could obtain a, right. a, an interested party. That's a, it's a good organ, too. It's been in good shape, and I think they're going to get yeah. many years out of that. And it's a, it's a huge expense for them to take down and move, too. So it's a, you know, it's a big investment. I'm glad it's that they're in the hundreds it. of thousands. Oh, yeah. Here. It's got a beautiful sound to it. Yep. So I make a motion to approve the agreement for transfer of organ to the Merrimack College. Um, I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Uh, um, the only thing is, I think I would just make an amendment that um, we authorize Dave to sign. Oh, sure. Or, or you? Or Casey? No, 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 no. Sorry, yeah, just, I just. Oh, I so ask Dave is to thing? sign. Sorry. Yeah, go it's, ahead. I have David as a signatory. Yep. I'm sorry to interrupt the motion, the roll call vote. But I did notice I had put April in there, not sure when they were going to be able to get back to me. If the board would give me the latitude to change that to March, I believe oh, yeah. they're going to try oh, yeah. to get this done sure. before yeah. the end Either of the month. I just, I just wanted to make sure that Dave yeah. was yeah. Yeah. I was assigned. Thank so you the for motion, catching that. The motion can be um, either okay. mar mar amended for March or April. And and Dave is authorizing to be Yep, signed. and authorized Dave to sign. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Yeah. Into the budget now. I don't have anything on right now. Well, that I was going to mitigation. Right? Oh, um, uh, yeah, actually, there is. Um, there is. Well, um, I went to at my Homeland Security meeting on Tuesday, last um, Tuesday. Um, Bob Berry from MEMA said that this year's um, hazardous mitigation a pot of money is $110 million. And the reason they get that from is, you know, it was, uh, they take what the federal disaster was, which was the pandemic, and it's 10%. So it was like a billion something. And then they make this money available for any hazardous mitigation project. And um, I feel that River Road is a prime candidate and the attractiveness of using the hazardous mitigation program is that there's they pay 75%. We only have to come up with 25%, which is better than the EWP program, which pays 60%, and we have to come up with 40%. Mm -hmm. So this is very attractive. And then, you know, Trevor had gone to, um, you know, to meet with the nonprofits and found out Eagle Brook is very concerned about Pine Nook Road, the stabilization of that. And, and I had already was thinking of Pine Nook for mm -hmm. the potential of this hazardous mitigation as well. They also mentioned just 
to get it out there for your knowledge was above the cemetery. I guess there's a section there that they've been trying to maintain and take fill in and stuff, but it's a landslide. It's a land. Yeah. So yeah. just to, that's also a tough spot too. There's, yeah, we can look at that. Just wanted to mention right. it because I, um, I didn't know if you knew that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are some land slide things like the one that's coming down from steam mill there's nothing you can do about there's it. nothing you can do yeah. it's man there's millions and millions and millions to fix so yeah. you just have to be able to get you know be Move able to along. pass it through yeah. because it's not it's movement it's a natural movement right and that's just yeah. a little bit different because it's on a, such a small scale compared to the steam mill right slot so the potentially we, we can have the reason why this is up here is because um we, uh, we've already been through the hazardous mitigation program. We were awarded $783,000 for um, along Little Meadow Road, which is from the sewer treatment plant to GA's campus. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Casey, what was that? Six years ago, eight yeah. years ago? It was what happened is eight years ago. Our, we renewed our hazardous mitigation plan. We sent it to MEMA, they approved it, and then it just got stuck at FEMA. For like 18 months and so we were awarded that money and then we had to give it back because there wasn't enough time because the money was awarded and you had to spend it within three years and we couldn't go out to bid we couldn't um you know get it implemented by the time you know we it was like 14 months left or something we just couldn't do it so um we had to really scramble to do that grant I had to dig out my old textbooks from like 30 years ago to do a cost benefit analysis. So it's not an easy application to do. But if you have a good case, which I think River Road is a good case, and I think Pine Nook is a good case, it, it's pretty clear that we could get the money. Mm -hmm. um, but I need some more information. And so what I was hoping is the board would authorize up to $1,000 so that I could um, higher at $75 an hour, Mike Smith, who's been recommended to me. Um, he's got like 20 years background in uh, DPW. He works at UMass right now, but um, he works with Sea Change Associates, um, which is David um, Pemerantz from, he retired from uh, Northampton DPW, and he's on the Franklin Conservation District with me. And so I know him, he's a really good guy, and he recommended Mike. He's the one that works with Mike. And what I'd like to do is take Chris Miller, John Pachork, and myself, go out to River Road and review River Road, because we have, we have to make the decision whether we're gonna go forward with this. And we also need to find out, you know, if this is, you know, what we had been given an estimate for, what was it, two or three million? repair yeah. versus a kind of a band-aid that could right. stabilize it or something until another opportunity comes along so i just i feel like before we move ahead because it's going to be a commitment of money need i need a little bit more information from someone who is has more experience than i do in in and, these fixes and looking at the water that comes off that and road he's, and Eagle we Road. were going to be right yeah. there on river road so we just zip up pine nook yeah. on the way back to the town hall and we can have them look at pine but i mean pine even Oak. just the the river road spot just looking at that water that runs off that road that's part of it yeah right. just those two yeah. things combined really so I, I mean i i feel like we need to jump on this it's it's going to be happening within a month or so and um john john Pachork, because he's on homeland security too um he reached out to bob so we have potentially someone that if day if you know we could look at whoever bob is recommending somewhere in the eastern part of the state yep. and then um we could you know look at dave figure out somebody who is could help us write it and administer it mm -hmm. would be fairly cheap money but this initial money would be I need to have more information. That, I mean, I just don't feel comfortable no, don't making a decision hard, on hard know which program, do. you know, I, we need to look at the, what we had already. We have this kind of a quote from, you know, local contractor. We have a quote from, you know, the engineer and, a, and there's like a few, 
zero's difference. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's <laughs> and just I'm a like, way. I'm not really sure. So, um, yeah. I mean, I've, I feel pretty confident that this program will work for us. It's a good deal. Uh, the Pine Nook, you know, I, I have no qualms about going to Eagle Brook and saying, no, they, you know, they're already yeah. investing in engineers to see what they can do. So you know, I'm give sure us a 25% match. So that would be clean yeah. for us. But the River Road one is where I'm hoping, you know, and Mike would come out, he'd write a report for us, and yeah. he would say, what's the difference between this, you know, $25,000 quote and this, you know, $2.4 million quote? Right. And give us some advice with, you know, what, program is going to fit yeah and you know and take advantage i just don't want the money to go away right without um, having a chance to buy the right. apple right yeah because it we got to fix that road i know it's and just if we only don't getting do anything worse. it's going to be a hundred percent on us and it'll be shut down right and, and likewise, the, oh and the mvp program we could yeah, do it under something. mvp but mvp is 50 percent. yeah it's not so a, yeah no we, I, we just don't have the money for this that. is this is a 75 percent at least okay I think it's worth going for. I'll make a motion to approve. I would that, say up to a thousand. Up to a thousand to move forward on the I estimating. I think it would be less than that by yeah. far, but sure. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, do we have? A, well, we, we you know, we, <laughs> right? we it's must getting have toward. A, we're getting towards the end of the year. Obviously, so we may be we able to do a transfer. Yeah. You know, we're supposed to have this retreat to figure uh, out priorities, uh, help Casey reorganize. Priorities River Road and <laughs> so we ha we have MMA conference money. We could probably there. take it. Yeah, we might like, have it. I know okay. it's small, small okay. potatoes compared to what. Okay. Yeah, we could just uh, you know move that move that money to okay. towards that's this, fine. if that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Would no, and see I, what you if, if that's what you're willing, that's what I would just suggest right now. Yeah. I mean, I still want us to go on sure. retreat, but we were never going to spend the full amount that was budgeted, so right. it doesn't really matter. Okay. Good. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfer. You had something to say before we got talking about that. Oh, well, I just, we I had reached out. Positions, right? Yeah, the class com. Um, no, but to something that Carolyn just said, I had reached out to an acquaintance of mine. She's very familiar with some of these grant programs, and one of those grant programs is the hazardous mitigation grant. So she has some training in that grant. Um, it'd be well, what interesting. Is, what's time what... consuming is doing the cost benefit analysis. But River Road is an easy fix. I mean, an easy story and easy to generate because that's a main north south, you know, road. And it's also, um, you know, critical, um, you know, for businesses like coming down from River Road and stuff. And it's an emergency route. It's basically we would use the same information that we use for the River Road um, Mass Works project. It's, and that's what you would she just cut and paste <laughs> almost the exact same thing. But you have to do the calculations on the right. be cost benefit analysis, which. You know, this is another 10 years added on to the sketchiness of my job to begin with. So well, the reason I asked her was because she has successfully written four, four or five grants from MassWorks, which requires that same analysis. Yeah. That's why I asked her. It, it, it's, it's just a calculation and it's no big deal, but you got to run it through the formula. So. Right. And they want to see that. Yeah. So um, having somebody write the story, cut and paste. And do the cap, you know, run it through the formula is not a huge lift, but well, that's the thing. It's a I mean, pain if it's in running neck. the same formula as, yeah, as it's mass works, that's it's, what she just did in Shelburne and Conway. Yeah, it's just it's much more complicated than say your regular it, story. It's, yeah. So we want to make sure that we have correct information. And I just feel like um, you know, this Mike Smith. And 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 David. No, Bush. I think Mike can give us a great it. estimate. I would just like to see what there is in terms of grant writing, like what right. what that parlays well, itself into. Dave can do that. He's that's what he used to do for Northampton, but I mean he's an engineer kind of person and did all their grants and stuff. But um, John had also, um, like I said, reached out to Bob Barry, and you know find out who who in the last round did the, had the most success and, you know, maybe we'll reach out to them. Even if they're in the Eastern part of the state, it's okay. Well, we also need to keep an eye on the cost because there's times that this stuff hits a procurement threshold. 
I know. So I that's. Know. Well, if we do a lot of groundwork, that cuts down the price. That's what I'm hoping. So that was be the, the, the idea was to get a direction. So we had to correct direction, but also do a lot more of the groundwork in his report would be the groundwork for the initial grant mm -hmm. process. Sense. So we don't have to pay twice, hopefully. And we're paying, you know, $75 an hour, which is pretty inexpensive compared for an engineer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chair. So, annual warrant. So you have a draft. It's very, it's very rough. Um, you'll see that there's, it's, there's two consent articles in it. And the first one is reports to officers, elected officials, those right. things that we discovered through COVID that we could combine for efficiency sake. Um, this is the first read for you guys, really. And so I have not sent it to council or to the moderator. So the consent article is A, B, C, D, E. Yep, consent article then has- And then we stop it with all the fun, right? Okay, good. Right, yep. and so there's a couple things here. And what I did was I've gone back through my email. I'm, I've checked with various other officials. There are several things in here. The consent ar article, this first one is boilerplate. Mm -hmm. Um, it's acknowledgement of gifts, re reports to officers yep. or off of officers, at acceptance of grants, contract authority. Yeah. The second article is revolving funds. Right. And this is also a boilerplate article that we mm -hmm. have. However, the third article, and notice they're it's not the numbered one. in case yeah. I want to move things around. That's fine. Um, or you want me to move things around. So the third article is actually creation of a revolving fund for foster care transportation. Right which was a request from the schools. Yep. It's a two part approach. Yep. First, we have to amend the bylaws for revolving funds to add this by to add this reference in the general laws because it's different from regular revolving funds. Okay. So first we have to do that the, and create the fund, the authority over it, which is the school committee, according to the law, mm -hmm. the revenue source, which would be the receipts related to foster care transportation. I'll get, to, I'll get to that in a second. The use of the funds. So this would be to transport foster care students out of district. Right. And then the spending limit is a guesstimate of a hundred thousand. I don't know what it should be. We right. could lower that in the final one. Yeah, that's fine. So that's the first piece of this. And the reason it's right after revolving funds is because it's right next. It's, it's yeah. literally no, a question, sense. same yeah. question. So the second piece <coughs> relates to the create the foster care transportation itself. And so I am guessing that the this is language from another town. Mm -hmm. We may want to tweak this, and I'm sure Lisa will, but essentially it outlines the authorization for the school committee to participate in an MOU with foster care transportation with various state agencies. And really the foster care transportation um, is a determination. If you're, if you're actually providing transportation for a foster care student who wants to remain in their school of origin, you would receive money from the school of origin and then turn around and pay for the transportation through that fund. That's why it's revolving right. fund. Do you, um, is, are the schools asking um, other towns to do this Yes, as well? all four towns and, in the district is this are their, being asked. Is this their lead? Is this, it's, it's, are they going to come up with a boilerplate so it's the same No, everywhere? not necessarily. No. Okay, because it's That's why I town. want council to look at this. Because okay. one thing that I see in the article, and this actually came from Conway, one thing I see in the article is an explanation, and we may not need to have that in the actual request for authorization. Okay. We maybe could put that in your notes. My, my concern with the spending limit of 100000 is that um, just look what you know Smith Voke is per student? I know it's 20, like two students or twenty something thousand. That's yeah. why I'm not sure what to put in there, and I, nobody I, seems to be able to give me an answer. I, I know. know, but it, if you had four or five counts. kids, it, you know, you would be yeah. over your limit. So is there other that's counts? a really good question, and that's it's just a placeholder yeah, right now. We can it. change it. Why don't you okay. have them drive themselves? It'd be cheaper. I know. Well, that's <laughs> what I always feel like when we night, do. Right? Well, Smith not one of your cars. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think he's doing this just because Touché. he heard me make that answer Touché. yesterday. All right, you two need to leave me alone. 
So the really the point is is create the revolving fund, and we'll have to figure out the authorization. All right, that works. And then the other consent so article. Bad. So the other consent article is special appropriations. Again, something we pulled together, learning through COVID. This you have reserve fund, you have the OPEB liability trust out of district placement. Um, that I think I. Um, and then the 350th appropriation, just, which is again, 10,000. Are any of these contentious? And I mean, the I OPEP don't think always they comes have up been. and, you know. We voted this consent article the past two All right. town meetings. Yeah, so if you don't think it's, I mean, no, we can it could be pull something. It out on town floor if we had to. I right. Just don't you can write the motion that way. Time like we did. Okay. Um, but right. that's so getting through this. So we then have the we move right into our financial article. So yep. classification comp plan, yep. omnibus budget, yep, the sewer wastewater enterprise fund, yep, scams yep. enterprise fund, capital. capital projects, which is then followed by frontier regional school request. Yep. And I've put the exact language in, including the notation that said the article was voted and supported by the four town frontier capital group. Um, the allocations are in there, so I would assume the motion would change to what Deerfield's allocation is. Yeah. And then Tilton Library requested a separate article for They're an still estimate. Still requesting this? Yes. But they requested it when we were saying, no, don't bother them. They requested it. Capital actually is a meeting tomorrow. I would, and I do think they'll talk about it. Um, but I'm following their request. You can always pass over it. Yep. Um, or it could come out prior to the final posting of the warrant. Okay. But it needs to be here if we're going to consider it. That's why I put it there. It's up to you guys. I'm just yeah, showing you just what people gave waste me. Waste the money. Okay. So then we have community. And the reason it's there is because it is actually a capital funding request. Mm -hmm. It relates to capital asset. Um, community preservation is next. Yeah. And, and there is a large. notation to possibly have an extension of the community preservation funding grant for the park because we may be right up against the deadline. It's a three-year program. So each of those grant funds are for a three-year period. Oh, from and CPI? Yes. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. Yes. I thought they were there until you got the job done. No, because remember, um, Tim Tim Newman is so worried about reimbursement. Oh, that's right, for the yeah, Indian house. It's that, yeah, because that three-year period okay. is up June 30th. So got it. I actually had mentioned it to Lisa when we talked does, about that, Carolyn, and that's what she mentioned. That's why you haven't known. Well, does... Um, but that's not listed here for yeah, should we extension. put on the Indian house? No, it is the Indian house isn't there. But if if you want me to, we yeah, yeah, I would, I would put on Indian I mean, house because um, Tim does have mass historical coming to look at it. To and we've approved. It, so I, it might not be done by the okay. June 30th. I okay. mean, that's why Tim is right. He is so nervous about that because well, there's yes. no reason we can't ask, yeah. for the Let's ask for the extension. Okay, and it's good. That's why I wanted to sort of. I thought about that. I had seen just so you know, I'd seen an email from Lisa. Well, She's he, back and forth with PVMA. You know, Council. the project's been done for a long time, but the they he couldn't get out. anybody from Mass Historical to come right. out. Right. He they barely got Mass Historical to go over the preservation restriction. I That's know. what they're going so back and weird. forth about. Like, I mean, it's historic Deerfield. You look I know. At, what, I what's know. going on at the state that they couldn't find a, a time to it, come This out. is not the first time I, I, I hear. Give me a break. No, it they're seems not. Like, what are you doing? not responsive. And Tim is. But where Tim are they? been hounding them. Where the other. I know. You know what I mean? I know. I don't know. It just but he, he's been hounding them. And he's, I know. He, he calls me every month and he says, this is, you know, I want you to know I've, you know, been, been going trying, back and forth. Yeah. And, yeah. No, I mean, I, I brought this up months right. ago when he called I mean, me. He was and we digital. sent it to council. Oh. Council, our council and PVMA's council actually worked on it, but mass mass historical was the slowdown. They couldn't even they wouldn't even look at the preservation restriction language. So they finally got it back to PVMA's council. She sent it to me and Lisa. Lisa's reviewed it. And we're now sending it back to make sure everything's copacetic. Let's go. These are it the kind take of things. A lot of time. These are the kind of things that people get annoyed with, with local government and state government about. Like it's just so these things that take so long. If they drive like if they, it's like yeah. job security. And I, what a waste of taxpayers' money to be I, running I, people around in circles where you could take a photo of something and send it in three minutes. 
it just I, I, I'm sure I'm I simplifying it, it but I, I watched it Trevor because it's right outside Victoria's kitchen window. yeah mm -hmm. it's like how and hard is it oh yeah you did it. it's Great. been completed for a long time but we had and to make a it, distinction they did a fantastic job right and so one of the issues with that is we had to make a distinction in the two buildings on that property and that was something I think Mass Historical wanted PVMA wanted it clarified, but Mass Historical wanted it specified in a certain way. So, Jones but there is progress, it's just slow. Um, so that's what made me think about it. So I wrote, just wrote myself a note to add Indian House extension. Could, in could here you as well. just send an email to Tim that you're put, we're putting it on the warrant? Mm -hmm. So for him not to have to be, I mean, he's so worried about it, seriously. This would be a hit for him because then he has to pay by, by, our bylaw, he has to pay back the money if he doesn't make the June 30th deadline. Just yeah, like we have to pay back total money sense. For that's that. what I was hoping one of us would come right. to. Is, and do we need to add this? And or that's not? What we'd have to pay the money back from the parks. Are, I know. Are there two things here the extension of the community preservation funding for the county two the same and thing, the community but... preservation grant extension? Or is that a different? Thing? No, community preservation fund is this year's request. CPA requests. Yeah, but it looks like it was repeated from the second down to All the, the way last down on one. The bottom. Is that the same thing? It's a long. Oh yeah, it was. Yep. Okay. Good. We got I one, moved one it. article. I'm... Yay! <laughs> we moved it. But we just added one. So. Fifteen minutes. Quicker. And I think yeah. I duplicated the Smith vote funding because I think I got. I was looking at two different warrants at the same time. So okay, just ignore so, that. So the Smith Smith vote one goes. Yeah, through. that can go okay. away because it's in the other section. It's in the consent. Unless article. there's yeah, it's in the consent article. Um, so then we have the FY22 funding request, mm -hmm. which is the July 2021 storm spending and the so, snow and ice shortfall. Yeah. So those are pretty, I just put a sum of money in there for now. Yep. Um, Settlement for all right. the bargaining. Settlement for other employment. And okay. so these next two articles, um, we may just deal with in the budget. I put them in there for a placeholder. Okay, that's fine. Um, and they're for Proceed settlement of sale. collective bargaining and non-union contracts. Okay. Now, this highlighted green article, this is proceeds from the sale of real property okay. to satisfy the borrowing you just signed up. I don't know if this is the exact right language or not. Care, I will have I will have Lisa Counselor. finesse that. Okay. But the intent with this highlighted article is to take the proceeds from the sale of the Oxford property to and pay the borrowing. Pay it off, right, pay it off. just get done. Yeah, yep. that's the whole plan. That's yep. the plan. So yep. what that actually, Brenda had brought that to my attention so we could plan for and it. And then whatever proceeds would roll into free cash. So, we're, so that's moving forward. We should have that pretty soon? Well, it's been forward. So the purchase and sale is executed. They have due diligence that they will be completing. So that's the reason we extended the borrowing. We had to anyway, but we extended it only for six months. Yeah. Okay. In the hopes that we get this settled. Yep. Okay. Yep. But this actually allows us, and so my question will be to Lisa, you know, do we have to put a time frame on it? I think if we get permission to pay it once the sale is executed, then we just put that money towards it. Yep. Um, there is a general bylaw change in here. It's a placeholder. We were hoping we would have yep. a manual created, but I'm thinking <sighs> we may have to push this off okay. because the personnel board has spent a lot of time dealing with class comp issues, yeah. which has meant they haven't had a lot of time to deal with it. You know, this that. might be better on a fall town meeting. That's yeah. what I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah. So if, I will move this to fall. Okay. Yeah, I, I would yep. feel better if it was fall. Okay. Only because we have more time to focus on Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. Now, I do have a question related to that. So my proposal anecdotally to the personnel board was to see if I could hire somebody who's an HR, former HR manager to help me go through that manual and come up to scratch in terms of getting something that's substantially complete for them to review before we give it to council. It will save us a little bit of money. And John, John Koreski mentioned this a couple weeks ago. It will save us a little bit of money in terms of the cost for review. And it helps me because it's a capacity thing. Mm -hmm. Going through that manual step-by-step yeah, is, no, it makes sense. It, you, it just takes a lot of time. Do you have uh, a funding stream figured well, out? Well, I'm going to talk to Brenda and see what I right. can do. It may be something. We'll I need to get that. a quote. I do. Anyway. This seems like a pretty short warrant. Are we missing it? it? We don't have any bylaw changes. Oh, maybe that's the reason. <laughs> so far so as zoning. I know, with the exception of this consideration, 
We don't really have any bylaw changes in front of us. We have the special act. So the next thing you see is this. This is pretty straightforward. We know so, it is. So and I'm afraid I forgot today, right? something. I know. That's what I was thinking. I, I'm so about that has been my life for three days. I have not slept because I'm afraid I'm forgetting something. Yeah, I kind of feel like something. See, it's, it's not just me. Well, All it right. is. It's like we're going to wind up going like what did we forget as soon as this meeting's over we're gonna go oh we didn't have any money okay. for that why so, didn't we put money in for that or, and not that we have any money but or anything not that we have any money. just i just feel like we always this seems really short you're looking at me with that look David. well we can look at the last year's thing and see what's but i uh, for me it's all I just, zoning 16 that's pages what I of zoning through. and bylaw changes maybe but we, maybe is that's there anything it. for the Leary this could be, that we need to do like all that so kind of stuff of that needs has to be to figured do with out. The you have to take it in. That's, right. the thing. That's later on. That's later on. So here's what is. So, so we've how, talked how, about this briefly. Do we need to do anything for town meeting for the Leary lot? Because um, uh, Hemshire seems to be coming forward. We have to have a meeting about that. We need more information yeah, from them. Okay. Really, we can need we, a little bit can of time. We just I put think a, that's a fall town meeting. Can, can yeah, but uh, then we're not going to have money. I know, but. But here's the thing, if you do the revenue replacement path, once free cash is certified, you do have money. Right. And you can say in your revenue replacement mm -hmm. vote that you intend to utilize that because you literally fill this out online. You intend to use yeah. that for cap upcoming capital we projects. We should get a meeting together just to talk ARPA and our plan going forward. Wow. Just to yeah. So we've discussed so this our plan, what we're doing. I'm leery of the leery one. <laughs> Well, we don't see the thing is the thing That's about the very lot is, is we need to know what yeah. the intent is. We don't really have a fully fleshed out idea of what Hampshire well, wants to do. So no, well, that's the, the piece is, that we need to talk about. The problem is this is the problem. This is why um, we need we need the re the reason why I'm concerned is is the MVP program uh, deadline is May 16th. We're not going to be there, Carolyn. No, I can no, tell no, you but, right now. But my concern when I look at when I look at Hampshire plans, okay, it's very tight up against our so, parking lot. So the grading of their project should match the grading. So here's the thing. This so, is why I say we're not going to be there. We don't have enough information. We, we actually need to sit down as a group internally right, and then, figure out what they want. Get then, a meeting together. then we need a meeting together. But but wait, time <laughs> out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, but can we post a meeting but, where we can say we're no, just talk about no, that? no, you're not. Please listen. To. Please listen. <laughs> okay. Right. So we had this conversation internally today. Oh, you did. Even okay. the draft plans, we don't know enough about what they want to do. So Bob and Jennifer and I are going to pull some staff members together. We've got to look at public safety based on just just that basic drawing. We need to sit down with the engineer and figure out more of what they want before we can do anything else. Because we need to know what their intent is, okay. and we need to be able to figure out who to communicate and what to communicate. This is why I think this okay. is more of a question for the fall. And I do think MVP will roll out another grant program in the fall. They did it last year, and they did it the year before. But I don't think we can accelerate this right before town meeting yeah. when we don't have enough information. Okay. We don't even have enough time to do can engineering. I, can I just give you what I'm concerned about looking at the plans today? Okay, the grading. I just want to make sure that you all are looking at the grading, because it's such the roof line is so there's so much roof <clears throat> that the, our grading and their grading have got to be together. Mm -hmm. Okay, and 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 the water that's coming off the roof is going to go onto where we want our sidewalk and positioning of our sidewalk to Elm Street and into the parking lot. So the parking lot has to be designed as a receiving area. We have to make sure that the water, that any water that's coming off their site is comp is accounted for in our area. In other words, in the design, in yeah. well, yes, it's fine, but there's gonna be water movement anyway. Even even if their own design does mm -hmm. supposedly retain it, it has to. I'm just saying that you have frequent intensive. Oh no, I get it. <laughs> yeah, really. And so, <laughs> our 
design, we need to know what, how much water is coming out. And so we need to talk to engineers. Right. So we need to make sure our design is a receiving area design and that we have some idea of what water is generated. And then... Um, well, we shouldn't give them any variance on no, how close no. we are to the property line. No, but it's... it's there's other enough. considerations. Yeah. yeah there's, it, because we don't know the full extent of what the they The problem want. is their engineers need to talk to our engineers so that the calculations are in sync. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I, I hear you. I know there's a, it's a, it's a, it's very complicated. Yeah. So and I can so take that to the meeting. Then the other question is you need to get a fire truck to the back yep. end of the We're building. We're already there. Okay. That's, that's, we want right. to invite somebody, a representative from the all fire right. district and police and possibly even poor Zach, who probably doesn't want to come to a meeting, but invite other per, other public safety personnel to sit in so we can troubleshoot and brainstorm. Well, again, I just, we don't our, like our stormwater bylaw might not be triggered by this addition. So we just want to make sure that engineers are on the same page. Bob's together. already talking about okay. that. That's what started that right. conversation two weeks ago. And, and now we, that he has something in hand, like you reference, we have something to look at. We have our you know, drive, drive out our access, you know, we have the access coming in and then the exit. And then we want to have a, you don't want people walking in the road, you want them to have on the sidewalk. So we want to make sure the setback from the sidewalk is enough so that people aren't, you know, walking in the roof runoff as they're in the sidewalk. I mean, I'm just Gunners, saying, right? it's just yeah. whatever. So okay. we That's... just need to protect the area. Good the Hi. We're going to have a pre, you know, pre meeting with all of us staff yeah. and and other professionals. Okay. I, I know, but I'm, those were just my observations today when I looked at the plan. Okay. Sure. So if you want to, you know, Carolyn, yeah. jot them down, and then you know, I can give them. I, I gave them to Casey. It's fine. I just okay. want to make sure that we're really looking at the big picture and that the parking lot is part of the whole thing. Okay. Okay. The next. Uh... So you want to finish this? Lily's here. Do you want? Oh to finish yeah, this no, Lily's we... here. Let's let's talk to Lily. Well, well, let's finish where we are. Oh yeah. okay. So, let's see. I, I thought we're... we already said that it looks too short. Well, it looks too one. short. But let's go back to the special act. So this the special act. Okay. Is a request to split the three positions into two: a town right. clerk and a treasurer collector. Yeah. Um, mm. And so the language here. And I discussed this with council. The language here really outlines how this occurred, but it creates the town clerk position as a freestanding position and creates it as an appointed position. Um, it also allows for a personal services contract. And the reason it allows for a personal services contract is if, for instance, we need to hire somebody to matriculate them in this special act would allow you to do that you, you would be allowed to do a special contract if you wanted to i left that language in i think it's a good choice um it's it fine. gives some leeway you don't have to but it allows you to okay same thing in section three which is the treasurer collector so what it does is it says the office of treasurer and the office of collector and it's separate so it separates it from the town clerk it does say it shall be merged into one office known as treasure collector. It has similar terms and it outlines. So in both sections, you outline the general expectations of the positions as town clerks and as treasure collectors. So again, it allows for a personal services contract. You can choose not to, but I think it gives you some leeway that you might not have if you don't. Um, and then it asks that it basically says, hey, we're splitting this three part position into two by saying in section five, this is what we're asking you to do. And it does say this act shall take effect upon its passage by the legislature. Mm -hmm. So it, the reason we put it down that way is so that we can get this done in a more effect, efficient way. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and then John had asked for a speed limit article to accept the provisions of General Laws Chapter 90, Section 17C, which would allow the select board or the road commissioners, if they are distinguished separately, to establish a speed limit of 25 miles per hour in 
a thickly settled or business district. I have a question around that because I want to ask council. Um, but this would be a response to several of the questions that he's been dealing with mm -hmm. from residents about high speed traffic mm -hmm. around their homes and stuff. So I didn't think the board would object to it. So I threw it in there for your discussion. Um, we have placeholders for marijuana sidewalks in the sewer bylaw because that had come up several years ago. I'm just bringing it back around for you guys to think about. And then we did receive a resolution in support of changing the state flag and seal of Massachusetts. What are they thinking to change it to? I don't know. They, they have a commission working on it. They want to leave the state of America. Why would they want to do that? It, it's, it's a diversity and inclusion response. So... I knew you were looking at that. I was yeah. To understand what, what well, it. Is that offensive? Yes. In, from from a Native American perspective, it could be considered offensive. Yeah. So there's a lot of states that Native are doing American this. Stuff. Hmm? Interesting. It's not to me, and I'm part Native American. Well, I wonder. It, I'd learn. I'd like to learn more about that. Yeah. So yeah. I I actually have a scan of the resolution. They could put my other life relative on there, cotton mother, but they probably wouldn't like that one either. Probably not. Okay. He's so this is you. actually just because he burned witches. He is goading me. He he is. <laughs> so I just want to learn more about it. I, so, don't, I don't know what they're looking to do. So what you okay. could do actually, if you wanted to have a conversation about that, you might call Lori Posada. Okay. She that was what she wanted to talk about two yeah. weeks ago. And we ended public comment before right. she was able to get on. Okay. So this has been certified. The signatures are certified. It's in here. They did request it in this warrant. Was this started from the Native Americans? They're, they're pushing I don't this? Know. I was trying I don't to figure know. out who was, who was I believe it. it might have been, but that's just me looking at the yeah. language. I don't know. I'm curious. Um, okay. I do know that this came forward in many of the other Franklin County communities two years ago right. and in the last year. So there's been a, a consistent yeah. effort to bring this up in every town. Okay. And it also asks that we ask our state representatives to... Um, advocate for okay. this project. All right. So okay. we haven't received a citizen's petition and actually Mr. Wilder mentioned it this, this after earlier this in the meeting. Right. So I will up. eliminate that. I'm so glad about that. eight years to get this flag and now they want to change it. That's right. Apparently Darn we're going to have to pay for a new one. Yep. So if you guys, I just wanted to know I what you wanted to do yet. about the three, the marijuana sidewalks and sewer bylaw, whether you wanted to address those or not. In what were they? Of, the marijuana, what do we have to put on there? That might allow us to change the marijuana bylaw to satisfy retail license questions for um, member. We have yeah, the oh, the number, the, numbers the number of, of them? retail licenses. Yeah. Okay. At this point, it would be a, we may want to wait it's and heavy lift think about right that. It's a heavy yeah. lift right now. It I, was in my initial. I know. Draft. I would put that off to the fall as well. Okay. Make them wait a little while. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm the kidding. sidewalks I'm just thinking piece, like, yeah. Just this is related I, directly. Just, we don't even need to worry about right. it at this point. We may not, about but we have had inquiries shove, about shoveling. Uh, yes, shoveling. Shoveling. That that is the question. Yeah. Um, if you recall, every other we actually has have it. to. We should. We've been trying to get this addressed for. Yeah. And it's kind of awful to do it in the fall because then it's winter time. Right. However, um. I can leave this in. Yeah, we can drop but it. But we do need to have a bigger conversation about yeah. it because if you recall, DOT just installed all those upgrades on five and ten and all they right. expect let's, the town to never take mind. Care of that. Let's let's put it off to the fall. The, I hear you. I just wanted you to have the opportunity to address uh, it since it had mm -hmm. come up a front in front of me a couple what, years ago. And what was the sewer bylaw? The sewer bylaw actually uh, Kevin asked for this a while ago, is to create sewer regulations in a bylaw that really outlines specific things. It could mm -hmm. create separate districts. It could identify specific, specific um, discharge allowances and such. We had a draft sewer bylaw that went to Dave Prickett for some information. We needed him to put in information, flow information, and we had, had never heard back from him. Mm -hmm. um, but we do not have a bylaw. You barely have regulations have that cover regulations you. Regulations in a bylaw. A bylaw, so this is the question. Regulations are not as strong as bylaws. You could start okay, with a regulation and matriculate it. Yeah, a lot more um, That's true. In the same way that having our Do benefits you, in 
the personnel bylaw is not exactly. flexible. Do you do we have to if we if um, if we don't go to town meeting on it, can we still put districts? Can we do districts through I don't regulations? know. That's actually a question for Lisa. Yeah, could you so, ask her? Because I would want to know if we could do districts, because that would be part of maybe a financing option of sorts. We, we talked about that the other night. Yeah. The yeah. other day. So, so yeah, so it's worth the question. If you want me to, I can ask Lisa yeah. that question. Yeah, it's just a lot. Just just to ask spring. her and then we'll make a decision on that, I guess. It is, but it's a general this isn't a zoning bylaw, it's a general bylaw. So you don't have the same requirements for notification. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll shut up now. You guys keep doing your thing. All right. Lily's right. here, so tired. I know. Poor Lily. Thank you, Lily, for hanging in there. So uh, what are we doing? Um, Lily is going to talk about the Complete Neighborhood Partnership. Oh. Um, it is uh, meetings that she went to. So go ahead, Lily. Hi, thank you all. You guys do a lot of hard work. <laughs> hey, you know what? We can hardly hear you, Lily. Okay, hang on. Volume up. Is that better? Yep. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Good. I'll lean forward too. Sorry, you get my chin then. Um, in the the course of attending a community housing summit where Alyssa LaRose, who is with Franklin Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority, now called HRA, thank God, um, and, and RDI, she brought to our meeting a woman who's in charge of the complete neighborhoods application. And I, I felt like it was too late for us, but they only announced this like March 10th and the applications are due April 15th. So um, I'm rushing to you all. And I will, um, I'm gonna read a little bit about what the complete neighborhood is so that I can give you the background. This is what I got from the website. A complete neighborhood is one where access to housing, jobs, education, essential needs, services, and amenities are all organized at the human scale. In these neighborhoods, planning and implementation of public transit, pedestrian and bicycle networks are prioritized over automobile infrastructure, um, which sounds an awful lot like the, this whole vision that's been coming together um, in CCI. And um, applicants must delineate one or more districts to designate as complete neighborhoods to receive targeted assistance. Districts must have existing or planned mobility hubs, which we do, or working towards adopting land use policies that will facilitate adequate density to support future mobility hubs. Applications must clearly describe how the community's need for complete neighborhoods partnership assistance aligns with program goals and documented and demonstration, documented and demonstration of community support. Um, the grant itself um, uh, has a first phase and that's what we would love to go for that you get basically um, technical services for uh, over the course of 30 months to do planning and all kinds of stuff that would be really sweet that um, I'm hoping we could use for the geothermal concept perhaps, uh, and to offset some of the requests for CPC funding that we're getting so that the CPC funding will then be available for the actual building. Um, the concept is Alyssa has suggested that we apply as a region. And right now, a region has formed with Greenfield as the lead. So it's Greenfield, Montague, Irving, Orange, and Waitley. So we would be a natural, you know, up, up the river and then east. And, but even so, each community still designates their complete neighborhoods. So we can apply as a region and we can have more than one complete um, neighborhood, which is an interesting thought as well. Um, they need from the select board, a letter of support and we need to identify the complete neighborhood on a map. And she's happy to work with us and the select board or whoever you want to take lead on this. I am happy to fill it all out 
and the beauty of doing it with um, with this regional thing means that I do believe it means that Casey's team will not be administering the grant, that the um, um, HRA RDI will be the ones managing the grant on our behalf. So they're asking to have all the towns have letters of support and I can do draft application sections and the map of the designated area to her by Monday, April 4th. So I am coming to you. I, I have a draft um, select board letter of support from Orange. They created one and they left empty spaces that I'm happy to share too, but also happy to talk about um, what, what this can be. What does it mean? What, what will it, it bring? It just seems like a great opportunity to... Uh, um, senior housing and um, the planning board have already supported this, voted to yes. support it. Yes, we have a letter of support I'm from really the- nervous bank. about another program, another thing to do. Yeah, but this, I just, is, like, it's this is, will give us technical support to actually do what we want to do. But there's reporting requirements that go back this, to HRA. This, this, this is part, we don't handle it. HRA? No, HRA requires you to respond twice a year for anything they do. I know they do. It's- Well, really well that, so- that's a, that is a legit question, and it is one of the questions: who is the point? Who would be the point person? We just don't have capacity as a as a town. Constantly, we're, you know, we are overwhelmed here and understaffed to keep doing this. That we keep taking on more things and developing more programs, and and it's all I like. I believe in all of it. I'm like, but this is a well. This is something that we're doing anyway. This is a way of getting funding for it. That's we're overwhelmed right now yeah but this trevor staff. this is our cci this is part of what we're doing but the what neighborhood we're doing is overwhelming our staff in the office that's we're what doing, we've been doing trevor we're doing everything we can that's why the cci was formed to support our what our offices are doing everything that's been related to the cci is coming with support however it takes two to four hours a week carolyn of my time is. Anything that happens, all the meetings, the if meetings Denise were sitting here, she would tell you that. It takes time. I and know. any reporting, especially if it's financial, has to go through the financial department, which then adds to Brenda's plate. So well, just understand that this adds, it adds to the strain of the other things. It, and if there's no priorities, it's all a free-for-all. And that's the problem we face. I feel that this supports what we're trying to do with CCI and it gives us money to hire the expertise to work with us to make sure we do this. So we what are you going to take off the priority radar screen? And what, and what kind of money are we talking they're going to give? And so that's the thing. Lily, what kind of money are we talking about? So I will pull up that site. Oh, um, sorry. I should have had it up in preparation. I was had my CPC stuff up instead. Um, uh, it is significant money. Um, the there are three different um, phases, and the first one is the um, like technical services that goes for up to thirty months. And hang on, I'm getting there. Complete neighborhoods. Oh damn. Um, I can do this. Um, and then you are in line for um, for funding. The, the massive amounts of funding seem to be focused on housing, which would be um, senior housing in the final phase. Okay, MBT and complete neighborhoods, MHP. Um, so the Complete Neighborhoods Partnership is uh, the program will select up to 12 communities to receive up to $150,000 each in technical assistance uh, over a five-year period of the program for a total of 1.8 million over a five-year period of the program. Six will be selected in 2022 and six in 2023. 
services will be performed by um, MHP, Mass Housing Partnership, I think it is, staff and or third party consultants. No direct funds will be awarded to selected communities. So maybe that's a different answer. Maybe it doesn't hit us at all. Um, so it doesn't give us any money. It, it provides money to another to, entity that would draw this work for us. That does the work, well, correct. What we're thinking of this would do, would be able to do the design or pull in the geothermal for all the campus. Because that's, yeah. we, have, we have UMass helping us with us now to give us some basic start. Do they still think it's worth it? So let me, um, I'm sorry, let me just don't have, yeah. Okay, so it says, but funds can be used for pre-development, policy development, community engagement, or financial analysis. And they do, they support. And then following the um, selection, the, their, the uh, awardees work with MHP's program manager to execute memoranda of agreement. And then you're eligible for the capital investment phase. The economic development bill included a $50 million allocation to support the creation of low income and moderate income housing in close pro proximity to transit nodes. So that would be um, an opportunity for senior housing and potentially for um, uh, looking at what's happening with Elm Circle will be expiring, uh, their credits expire in eight years. And that will, if we don't do something, we will really be in trouble in our affordable housing area, um, which is just another thought. But uh, so apparently they don't give us money, they give us services. So I, th I think that sounds even better. Well, my, again, my concern is that we sign up for this and we were spending staff time on it. I just, I'm really- but I don't, I don't know that we would. That's the thing is, I think that we could, if, if you appoint someone to manage this relationship, and I know she's not here and it's not really fair, but it might be someone like Denise because she is the chair of CCI and has the larger picture. Um, that might make sense. It's not nice to volunteer someone who isn't here, I know. <laughs> but, yeah, um, staff time. So, you know, the only way right now these grants are going to work is if there's a provision in the grant to let us hire somebody to administer the grants. But there's no administration. Well, we don't administer it, but it, it's, there's work that's going to be passed off to the town that we're gonna we so, should be able to hire somebody to handle that if we're gonna be taking on more. That's, you know. So uh, I guess I would just say that um, it would be, it, it, it's a, it would be a shame to lose out on an opportunity. It doesn't even mean we're gonna get it, right? This is about applying for it um, and uh, to get these services to do the analysis for, say, the geothermal, do the site feasibility work around the campus, and you get the services, this is work that we are going to have to do no matter what. And either we pay with cash and have to manage it, ourselves because we're going to have to pay for it and manage it if we're going to do the work right so either we pay for it and manage it or we manage it and the, our tax dollars that we've already spent pay for it i guess that's the way i look at it my, my concern is just that we just don't have staff to continually take on initiatives and i'm i'm, I'm like my so are you saying you don't like want to go get, forward my with this goal, plan no my whole goal is to get our office staff and like get our feet under us. Like those are my major priorities is wastewater staff, office staff here, like get our feet under us before we take on more stuff. But I do Trevor, believe in but all Trevor, this. But Trevor, this is part of what we're doing going forward with anyway. We're going forward with the grammar school. This, what we're thinking of is doing- We which, don't have money for the grammar school. Like right now, we don't have money for these projects right now. 
So I'm, I'm nervous. But, about but I'm not, I'm not. sorry to interrupt, but a lot of these projects are, um, having just come from the CPA meeting, many of them will be coming through the CPC and um, senior housing, <clears throat> if we follow the path that Sunderland followed, will not impact the town's debt load at all. If um, the, the grammar school then will be then taking up probably a significant chunk of CPA money. And um, there's also the ability to bond against CPA future monies that I think is how they're thinking about funding that. Um, that's what they're talking about at any rate. So- Could you forward us a written synopsis of actually what this is so we can understand it maybe a little bit better? Sure. Um, yes, we, well, we are meeting on Friday, right? Okay, that would be fine. We could make a decision by Friday. Okay, and I'm going to meet with um, Hannah, I can't remember her last name, that Waitley has a planner, okay, which is very exciting. I'm going to meet with her and Denise on Friday. And um, if I would just to get an understanding of, because they're in this. You know what are they thinking? What are how are they managing it? And if you have any questions you want me to ask her, um, let me know. You know because they would certainly have a an experience similar to ours as opposed to say Greenfield, right? Um, I think, well, as you know, we were thinking of the geothermal system, mm -hmm. and that would reduce the cost of senior housing, the town hall you know, police station heating and cooling, library heating and cooling, elementary school heating and cooling, whatever. So if you can keep that in mind and, and think about this program for that um, and then get back to us for Friday because I believe we have a 3 p.m. meeting. I will do that. So, so you are asking me for a brief summary of, of um, who's involved, what's the program, what do we get in return, how is it managed, right? And I will actually go Number specifically one. to Alyssa and talk about that because I totally understand that concern. I do too, but I, I believe with Greenfield being the lead and um, a housing authority involved that we will not have to do more than the two, twice a year, uh, this is what we did. Right. and reporting. Um, I will ask. Yeah, because we don't do any reporting like for the nurse, you know, grant other than say, yes, we receive the services. Yeah. Greenfield uh, will lead on that. It is very attractive because we have Greenfield, Montague and Orange in this group. The link of course is Irving, but- Irving Irving's, Irving's in it too. Irving's in it too, because they know that they're getting a good deal with Greenfield. <laughs> yeah. And sure. that's why we want to join in because otherwise we wouldn't be picked. And that's why Irving, I'm sure Irving's in there for that reason. Right. All right. So I'm, I'm going to, um, I'm going to get you a synopsis of the, of the program. We want to understand how it's managed and um, what are the reporting requirements? Anything right. else? And if, if, and if something like the geothermal would qualify. Okay. Technical assistance to get the geothermal designed and, you know, obviously the implementation of the geothermal will cut all our expenses, but getting it designed would also cost, you know, save a lot of money. Right, if we could do it through- uh, feasibility, okay. It's the feasibility of the geothermal system to support the entire campus. Okay, I can do that and I will have that to you. Um, um, we're meeting at 10 o'clock Friday morning with, with Hannah, but I will be in touch with Alyssa. So the, other, um, the other project that I, um, was, I had in mind was all the design work, a landscape design to mm. um, handle all the parking associated with the campus. So you had um, flow, you had flow of the entire campus Yep. and you had consistency of design. So it was attractive, but mainly take, you know, cause the library requires parking spaces 
the town hall will require sp parking spaces and the senior center will have parking spaces. Yep. So the, a landscape design and working with the geothermal would be one of the things that we'd want. Sure. As well. I don't know if you can think of something else related to technical services. Okay. All right. We're good. Okay, I can do that and I will get it to you as soon as humanly possible. Okay. Thank so, you. All right. Thank you guys. Good night. <laughs> Um, the next thing we have is the appointment for the oh yes outreach coordinator yes yes so you have a recommendation from the director yep um do you want to read this whole memo or just do the appointment just do the appointment i think okay the memo is so, published in the mma oh it is okay great yep. so um i i make a motion to appoint chris uh goudreau as the um candidate for the outreach coordinator for the South County Senior Center. I will second that. I think it's wonderful that he's don't want willing to do yes. this. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Chairman McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Thank you. Okay, uh, placeholder PBA. PBMA Craft Fair Permit. Yep. Um, I make a motion to approve the Crest Fair uh, permits for um, September, what was the date? 17th and 18th. 17th and 18th. Um, and just the normal coordination with uh, the police. Yeah, sounds good. I'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Joe McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Great agenda. Another craft fair. Great. Okay. All yours, Casey. Um, I'm going to try to be quick. Yeah. I did want to, if you guys look back earlier in your packet, you'll see there's a draft classification compensation plan. Mm -hmm. um, because we have a couple things we need to change in the class comp, I mentioned it earlier, we need to hold another hearing. So I requested a hearing date be set by personnel board. Under the, under the authority of the bylaw for them to do that. Right now you see, see three highlighted positions and I'll refer to back to the earlier discussion, which is we have to keep the three part treasure collector town clerk position in our bylaw in the event the legislature does not vote right. or town meeting does not vote to split those positions. Mm -hmm. um, the yellow highlights indicate the three positions that would be appointed. And one of them is the head of young adult services, which was approved by personnel board, but not included at the time in the class comp. They closed the hearing before we could include it. So we're circling back around to that. And is that through the library? Pardon? That's through the library. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But personnel board has to vote this, so I wanted you okay. guys to be aware of it. Yep. Um, right now, I anticipate only one other change, and that would be to change the title possibly for the assistant town clerk to include the financial duties that we expect that position to take on, because it would it would be slightly different than it is now. Certainly, it would include the collections duties that already happen, the town clerk duties that that position supports for the town clerk but also the financial duties to support absent treasury, of course, to support the town accountant, because that's an element of support that's sort of left hanging and it's creating an impact on Brenda. And Brenda, we had mentioned it. I know she and I had talked about it, but we talked, again, we talked this through with the auditor, we talked this through with staff and, We've really come to the conclusion that there needs to be an allocation of support. But if you recall, I said we have to have the treasury separate from accountants' duties because of the requirements in the statutes mm -hmm. to have the basically the wall. Um, so we would ele add elements of accounting duties, not treasury duties, mm -hmm. which is effectively what happens now. Only we would add a data entry elements mm -hmm. because that would actually help the most 
data entry and certain, because you know that the person that's the assistant town clerk handles the processing of the warrant anyway. So it would expand those duties. I don't have that finalized, okay. but I plan to be able to take something to the personnel board for Monday. And we hadn't incorporated, although the financial duties are somewhat fleshed out in the current job description, it doesn't include the accountant piece of it. So I just wanna warn you that you may see that change at your next meeting, just for reference, okay. but at this point, these are the three changes that we have finalized by personnel board. And the hearing itself is on, is in April. And we did a 14 day notice um, with one of the, of the hearing itself. It's April, excuse me, I think it's April 11th. Um, and so we'll publish that hearing on Monday the 28th and We'll put this up for discussion purposes so that people who can refer to it can see it. But if we do have that one change, we can change, we can make that addition okay. as an additional consideration. So that's a piece that I needed you guys to know about. And then what we've been working on this week is capital planning support. Certainly, I've been trying to work with the chair on the, the capital improvement plan. Um, he and I have both been unable to connect to each other. So I'm hoping that we can get that done tomorrow. The organ item you knew about because I brought it to you. Mm -hmm. um, we have been dealing with several HR things, daily HR and special projects. Um, and one of those things is, is working on this process itself, this split and identification of the specific duties for the for the separated position. Um, we've been, I've been working with the South County Senior Center director on the lease agreement with Holy Family since we're pretty sure that we won't be able to get repairs done by June 30th. So we will process a lease agreement amendment for that after discussion yeah. with Father Reardon. Um, like Trevor mentioned, we had meetings with the nonprofits this week. We've had some coordination amongst various departments, public works to finalize the backstop. I got a call from Trevor the other day. Very Apparently pleased. the backstop Very looks pleased. pretty good. It so really nice. I'm glad. Oh, so it was done? It looks, it's it almost looks, done. It looks fantastic. Wait, drive by and see it in the okay. daytime. All right. It looks really, I mean, I think they still needed, I don't know if yeah. they've done it, but they still needed. LNL like had a few things they needed to find Fencing up top, new pipes, unless they painted them, but they look great. They preserved what they really could, good. but they for, did replace yeah, things. It almost looked all brand new. For, you know, it was such a, everybody got in such a hassle on it, and it then was, all of a sudden it just happened. It looked great. Well, she made yeah. it happen. And, yeah. And Bill. But that's Hilton. what I meant. Bill, so I and, think Bill Hilton. I, and we have to Darius thank Chris Miller. And Chris so Miller I, and, I think everybody, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I asked Chris Miller for help. For, and it's basically an allocation of force account labor. I think we should cost. say thank you very much, Casey. Thank you, Chris Miller and yes. Bill. Hilbert. And Bill and yeah. Darius. And, and Darius so it was a whole group of us. Sue Antonellis, um, we've discussed that with her. So, you know, she was part She was part of this as well. It was great. a team. It's a so team effort. And it looks we, great. We got it. We got it going. Nobody so got local hurt. services for you. Mm. But that's and a nobody, coordination thing. And nobody got hurt. And nobody got hurt. And it's all ready in time for the season. Yeah. <laughs> No, all I have to do is find the money to pay for it. That's right. Well, so no, I, I have I have my places. Um, if I do need transfers, I will let you guys know. All right. Okay. Um, but we've also been doing. I've been delegating, beginning to delegate more and more to staff. Certainly, the assistant town administrator. She's been working on energy projects for us related to our accounts, mm -hmm. transitions from the streetlights, transitions, yep. considerations work. for yeah. costs because. As we've gone through the budget, we've noticed that one of our accounts, we're out of contract with one of our suppliers, which has increased our costs. So we're gonna make a change this week to reduce those costs, hopefully. Okay. And Trevor actually knows because I picked his brain about it. Um, so we're gonna be making those changes. That's what they're working on tomorrow, Trevor. Yeah. And so I there's a lot going on in here and it isn't just what people hear about in front of them. It's a, a huge amount of work that happens. Um, North Main Street project, the 
evening meetings like finance and stuff and then you guys are doing joint meetings with finance um we also are continuing to onboard new a new employee we have bylaw interpretation and stuff that i work with the benefits um assistant treasure collector on most of the time um the community one stop so we've been working with the grant coordinator we finalized that contract and got the letter of intent in now we have to do follow-up on planning with denise so the three of us will meet we meet once a week to go over this stuff so when i say that there's a administrative know, impact it's definitely there i i, I don't the reason why this the complete neighborhood sounds good is because i don't think you you have to do have that hands-on but we'll get verification from Lily. Yeah, Lily will give us some information. So a couple of other things I wanna draw your attention to is the mail. And the mail actually has, a, has the information about the attorney general's decision. Mm -hmm. So you have a printout of that for, your, for you to read. Yep. And I think that's the right one. Um, then we have Woman Hill had given, had sent their gift in. So you have a print, a copy of that. And the memorandum from DPC about the South Deerfield and Old Deerfield wastewater treatment facilities recommendation for implementation of the remaining upgrades. So this I would take home and chew on because it really outlines, and Trevor had mentioned it a couple of days ago, it, to me, it really outlines the process that okay. they see moving forward. And I think you guys are gonna have to go back and revisit it. We don't. Trevor and I, and I really am putting words in his mouth without intending to, but I don't think we're in a position to do anything right now, but we do need to be thoughtful about how we proceed in terms of borrowing and stuff, yeah. because we've got upcoming items that we have to deal with, right, Trevor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wanted you guys to have a print out of this thing so you could read it. Okay. Yep. There's a lot there. Yes, there is a lot there. So... Yeah. That's some of those items that you just need to be think about. We also, in the mail, we received um, a remittance from Comcast and their annual notice of filing. So this includes a lot of information. If people would like to read it, it's like a 40 page document. If people would like to read it, it's available in the town hall. We can throw it up on the website if somebody's interested or email it, we have a scan copy. I didn't include the entire thing. So, that's where we are to some extent right now there's there's other things going on but that's what's really been on our radar screen we do have an item unanticipated though and so that is hold on a second i think we have to sign it oh what is it? oh this is the um liquor license Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that. So after we sent in the applications from last the last yeah. meetings, like our license hearings, the ABCC asked us to revise the cover sheet. So okay. you'll see that revised cover sheet with the background information that the board needs to re-sign. So this is at their request. The ABCC's request? Yes, the ABCC's request. And then is, is this the unanticipated? No, that's actually a request for comments that we had talked about. You guys oh. had put it off. It's it's about the oh for that balance. Yeah, uh, for that. Yeah. So there's a hearing tomorrow night. Um, you guys had reviewed it. You it's weren't CBA. sure you wanted to answer as the group um it's in relation to a special permit is the zoning board meeting tomorrow night? yes oh okay yes certainly you could attend as an individual so, just yeah. you can't represent it represent the sure. select board okay if you're interested in commenting yeah. all right that's it mm -hmm. thank you and so the item that's unanticipated was i just wanted to let you all know as the board of health the board of health agent received an incomplete application without payment for a recreation camp mm -hmm. and so the applicant was notified that the application was incomplete and the agent requested that it be completed in the fee paid well the applicant um is requesting a hearing by the board of health 
the issue is, is it's an inc incomplete application. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it isn't even ready to be discussed. Um, so after talking to Alex, I just had a suggestion and actually I had mentioned it right before we started with Carolyn um, that the select, that the, I shouldn't say the select board, that the board of health considered just notifying the applicant that because they didn't complete the application in the first place, they should resubmit it for reconsideration. With um, the payment. With payment, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that only makes sense. Right, right. That's what I thought. Um, because, you know, we've already, if you've already reviewed an application, you've already put time into it. So, yeah, I, I just like to be that. able to have staff let the applicant know that this was discussed and that they really should resubmit their application um, with payment in a complete form for further consideration. Um, it probably should come from the Board of Health, though. Yeah. So we could draft a letter and... And I can sign it. Okay. So you want us to draft a letter? Yep. Okay. Basically just suggesting the applicant resubmit um, an application with payment for us to look at. Again. Yeah. Okay. Should we put something in there to make sure that we do not... Start the day camp until they get order health. Oh, them. yeah. Because I think that's their intention. Yeah, I think so. So, all right. I hate to say it, but that's from what I've been picking up. Conversations sounds like. Yeah. Well, anyway. there is a timeline in the re in the board of health application to submit an application, mm -hmm. and honestly, it's been years since I did it, so I don't remember what it is. But certainly, you we have to have ninety that. days before the start of the that's camp. it. Um, they have to have 90, uh, the application has to be in, has to be complete, and has to be approved 90 days prior to the start of the camp. Okay. And what we could do is draft it and have Carolyn just, yeah, and the yeah. agent look at it and yeah. then Carol. So it would just be, if you're okay with Carolyn signing it, we could just do it that way. You need a motion on that? I think it's consensus. it's consensus. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, so yeah. if we do it that way, unless, Carolyn, do you want to vote on it? Why don't we vote on it? Okay. Actually, right. I'll make the motion that um, we request the applicant to resubmit um, uh, the application with payment and for Board of Health review. Okay. Yep. Just I'll second that motion. It to completed application? Oh, yeah. Completed, completed application. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll second that motion. And maybe you can put in there some work in that, you know, 90 days prior, we have to, you have, the applicant has to be approved 90 days prior to the start of, of, the, camp. of the camp. Yeah. Is that, that's general. That's part that's of the mass general yeah. Got it. All, right. all this is, um, the requirements are all mass general law. Huh. Mm -hmm. It's, it's state children, requirements. Right? Yeah. It's not okay. our requirements. Yep. This is not a. We just need a complete choice. application yeah. process. Bonus. Well. There was confusion because it was daycare versus day camp, and uh, you know yeah. there was all kinds of. I remember clear. we went through this years ago. Yeah, we did. We did. So but it's just was, a quite. You know, yeah. we used to have checklists to do this, and I'm, and that's the thing. Using checklists is really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so if, and I think we published that. I can check with Alex, but I think that checklist is published Alex in the application. Alex went through the entire checklist. So yeah, so we just need to let them know you need to resubmit. A completed application with payment for reconsideration. Right, because we never receive payment initially, anyway. So it's incomplete because it's not. There's no fee attached. No. And that's why we just submit a new one. Yeah. So we'll just do it that way, and we'll write yep. it up. Okay. Very good. So did you guys vote? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So I, I know. Favor. I Trevor McDaniel. I Carolyn Ness. I Dave Wolf. Okay. Trevor, do you mind putting this on? No. Yeah. Happy yeah. to write. Yeah, yeah, I should be able to post it again. Because Friday's the deadline for oh you know, to for join lunch. us. Okay, yeah, sure. for the um, free lunch. Yep, I'll make I have sure to, to give numbers for the free lunch. Yep. Okay. I will. And I just want to remind everybody oh, that you do uh, have a meeting at three o'clock on Friday to go yes. over the final annual town warrant. Oh, wonderful! Combination. It's a plug-in electric, but it's 
limited miles to get up to the point of those hybrids. Can you let Pat know that Dave, in case he's got signed up? You, you, you do? You are? Yeah, I'd, I've got to bring a Toyota there. Thank you. I think it will be really good. It'll be really interesting. It's free coffee and donuts, or free snack and coffee. I'm not a cop anymore. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> So I'll you want say, me to have her sign you, you come up, in David? the morning, you get free coffee and snack, oh, okay. and then and then we get a free lunch. So, you know, it's kind of nice. I mean, that's pretty well okay, guys. Are you come on. Are Trevor, that's here? pretty rough. That's what? pretty rough that I did because I was doing it before. Oh, no, that's what, and not, it was rough that I printed. I'm just going to clean up a couple of your things and maybe somebody else can. Brenda's always good at proofreading. Brenda's busy doing the town report. If you ask her to do this something else, she'll pull report. her hair out. This is, this this is, is town, town report. report. I know, but she's already <laughs> doing the majority of it. She's I'm like sure a, she will look at it. A great I can she relook is. at it. I told her that. I can relook at it when you fix okay, it Okay, I will. And I've got another sentence that'll probably have multiple okay. grammatical errors in it. <laughs> well, if, you, if you're fixing it and you can run it off, then I will read it very carefully. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Motion to adjourn. You got anything else? Oh, I'm no. You already said it. Second. All right. <laughs> yeah, I second it. I did. All those in favor? Bye, Trevor McDaniel. Bye, Carolyn Ness. Bye, Dave Wilson. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you.